Uh oh. There we go. Better. Pull it over. Wait, what's happening? Where's my music? I don't hear anything. What is going? System up. There we go. What's up, everyone? Happy uh, happy Tuesday out here. Welcome back from the great three day weekend. Just getting set up. I made it before seven oh one, which is always the key. Uh, it is. Hold on one second. Let me actually turn on the light. A little. I knew it was a little bit dark in here. One second. There we go. I got it now. Things are a little bit better now. What's up, everyone? How you doing tonight? I'm not prepared. I'm prepared for tonight. I'm not prepared at this moment. Uh, what's up, MG? Good to see you. Y'all on time early, you know? First commenter. The first commenter of the day should get some type of uh of metal here. Um, we'll figure we'll figure something out for that. What's up, Apogee? What's up, Chelsea Carter? Welcome back. I'm glad you stuck around after that first time. Shargi Shrez, on time, gang, you know? Hey, also, that 1070, I have something cool to do with that 1070. I'll talk, I'm gonna give you a, I'll talk to you after this. Um, what's up, uh, YGBSM? How's everyone doing? What's up, uh, Triple Drizzle? I like it, I like the name. GT3RS, oh yeah, I didn't, I didn't realize you guys could see my, uh, my background. That is, in fact, a GT3RS. Um, I didn't used to be a Porsche fan. Uh, I'm absolutely a Porsche fan now. The car that I wanted, that I've kind of wanted more than anything for a long time, that's kind of stolen my heart has been, you know, I've always just wanted a Corvette. I just want a Corvette. Uh, but slowly, I'm not necessarily, yes, I love the GT3 RS, but those Cayman GTSs uh, are beautiful to me. So, uh, yes. Oh, great question. Oh, you know what? You know what, Gene? You got one. You got one. I like it. I like it. We'll pick another date though, but I like that. You can take your pick. I'll, I'm going to message you after this. We do have these Google homes here and I never figured out how to do what I wanted to do with them. So you know what? You've been consistent. You've been, uh, you've been probably, I want to run some metrics. You probably one of the top chatters. You get one. You got one. I like it. I like the initiative there. You just say, you know, you say, Hey, you know, what about this thing? You got one. So I'll, I'll send you a message. Uh, pick whichever color you want. I have three, I actually have three of them. I keep two boxes on the table because I got the third one separately. Um, but yes, Imogene, you are the victor of the first one. So you won the first competition. I was waiting for someone to ask, you know, that's, that was all in the plans, all in the plans. Uh, but I found out where to send it and I'll absolutely send it out. So congratulations. Um, but we do need to figure out a way how to get rid of the rest of these. And there will be a number of other just giveaways throughout just so you know, keep things, keep things spicy a little bit, have a little bit of fun. Um, so I'll make sure I don't forget about that but tonight i hope that everyone had a phenomenal weekend a phenomenal three-day weekend uh yesterday we did spend some time together uh for everyone who's going through horizons learning a little bit about cloud computing learning about s3 but tonight we are back into decoded we are going to be learning about uh we this is the night that's going to be fun for everyone this tonight is when you're going to really feel like you're coding um well you probably you might have already felt like that but this tonight is the night where uh, we start getting into logic into uh controlling the flow of our code and so um it's gonna be um should be interesting should be fun check out uh cw limone on youtube okay i'm gonna check it out plus it's a zero one owner i will absolutely hold on i mean i you know what i've seen so many youtubers let me i'll pull it up right now just to do a little search here cw I, I don't think I've ever seen this person before, but uh, oh yes, let's do it. Let's do it, subscribe, I already love it. He started out on the racetrack immediately. We're doing it. I'm following, thank you very much. I'll let you know how I like the videos. Well, Peach had helped him with his code last night. That's dope, you're just, you are, Mimji, you're making a name for yourself. You're making a name for yourself out here. I love it, yeah. Uh, I say, I actually stayed on for a while. I was actually lurking on uh, Peach's channel for a little while, just kind of, like I said, uh, at the end there, like there's a lot of game developers. I'm actually interested uh, in game development. I do love video games, always have. Um, and I think, you know, I think it's a pretty interesting thing. I've, I've worked at a video game company before. Uh, it is something that I kind of, one day, want to dive into a little bit and, and maybe be a part of. Maybe I don't want to build my own game from scratch. Um, but uh, maybe contribute to someone else's who's building a game. I think it would be pretty fun. Uh, it's still programming. It is, uh, I think there's a, a little more of an artistic thing. You have, you have so much freedom in what you can do and uh, I think it would be pretty fun to do. Yeah, no, nah, I agree. I definitely agree. 
Okay, so tonight, let me get you all, first off, let's turn our VM up because tonight we're gonna be coding, coding. Um, also, if, um, I'm gonna spend some time tonight, I, I have, there's gonna be a repository for it. There's gonna be a Git repository that uh, has homework. There's actually gonna be, a, I actually have a homework assignment for every single class from here on out. There's a, uh, there's actually coding homework. Now, I might just share today's with you um, just because, but GitHub has a classroom feature where you can get it to auto, like, uh, you can get it to auto grade the assignments and kind of give feedback and stuff. Uh, and because it's like integrated right in GitHub, like it, it's it's a super nice thing if you can get it running. Uh, and so it's 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 not that hard to use. It just takes some setup. So I've been I spent um Sunday uh, setting up a lot of it, and I'm part of the way there. Um, but there's still some things that I need to do in there to get it working. So um, I'm gonna spend a little time tonight. If if it seems like it's gonna be. Uh, you know a big deal i'm just going to release to you um in the google in the google in the google classroom i'm going to release to you just links to the repo um but i would like to, i might do both just because i know some people are probably not going to want to join that and they just want access to the to the code uh but the code is basically going to be the first couple are going to be more like uh give you a little like hey here's a little scenario like now create these things for me and the first couple will be you know create a variable for this you know add these things and it'll be very uh prescriptive uh but as we get a little farther and some of the stuff even even for thursday uh is a little more open-ended uh and we'll you'll have to actually start to like i don't know try to try to try to search the internet a little bit on, on what you're doing so it should be pretty fun i'm actually pretty excited about it because i think it introduces a new level of uh of interactivity i think it's pretty cool but yeah it's uh it, I, you know i i kind of suck at using all these tools to be 100 percent honest is last Thursday's class on YouTube? I don't see it. Should be? Uh, what was last Thursday's class? Good question. Uh, so basically, I I uploaded all of my stuff when I said I was gonna upload it, uh, but I forgot to trim the, the intro off, and my intro songs are always like real songs, and they all got copyright strike, but copyright strike to where they got pulled down. Usually, they'll demonetize it, I don't really care, but uh, they in fact pulled them down, so let's check really quick. Let's see what's missing. Uh, because I think everything should be there. Let's go to playlists uh, just to make sure. So pipelines has three videos. Decoded only has five. That's that's good. We'll check that out. Which one is missing? Five of six. I will check that out after this. Um, should be rendered out. I'll see if they pulled it down. But thanks for letting me know about that. What's up, D Jackson? How you doing tonight? Okay, let's get our slides pulled up because tonight is going to be fun. We will be here. Uh, I don't know. Nope, I'm not making, I learned last night. I'm not making any more comments to how long we're gonna be sticking around. Just, we're just gonna have some fun. Slides. Let's see. Let's grab it. Trip link, anyone. Let's, done. Share this. Okay, here we go. So tonight is a fun one. Actually, we'll give people one more minute. Um, you know, we usually start around the 710 mark. Um, yeah, not, not too many slides. How many slides do we have here? Nine slides, but nine um, probably of the most important, like these are probably the, the most important of the core concepts you're kind of gonna be learning uh, in, in kind of base programming when you're first learning how to program code stuff. Uh, this stuff is pretty important, so it should be pretty fun. We're done when we're done. I like it. Hashtag stamp that. Um, I watched. I'm, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna start sharing some of the um, the things that I come across. Uh, the little motion, motivational tidbits I come across when I am working out or just I don't know throughout the day, um, like videos and stuff. I think I'm gonna start adding them as uh, as material in the and the classwork stuff. Um, but um, one first off. Today, I rode my bike into the office. Office office is uh, it's open for people who, um, I work in a co-working space um, and no one's really there, uh, but I rode there to pick up a package that I needed to pick up that got shipped there. Um, and, you know, it's not super close. Like, it's, it's probably like an 11 mile ride, um, but it's kind of, you know, weird out of the way. It was, you know, something I never did before. So that was fun, went there and back. The ride there is was cake. The ride back, uh, Google Maps told me the, the down, like, 
downhill um the elevation shift from here to there is about a thousand feet um going there um but in my in my favor but coming back whoo at the end of a work day oh man that was tough i spilled because i got a little piece of ice that was a mistake but um i'm a, I'm a little bit smoked right now to be 100 percent honest with you that one they hurt that's your back hurt a lot i've been riding like i've been doing like 12 to 15 mile rides daily so like didn't seem i thought i'll be fine and i was fine i really was fine um i really tried to push myself on the way back but uh, I, I heard a lot of good motivational things that came up in my playlist to help me out um but yeah it's, it's like it's like 11 12 miles um but yes it was just that elevation <laughs> biking in a pandemic uh yeah you know why not are we gonna do fizzbuzz and python uh sure tonight we will have well, tonight we'll have all the tools to do fizzbuzz um sure if we have time we can do fizzbuzz no problem i mean you got to do fizzbuzz at some point random ass question what hash or encoding uses equals equals, equals equals at the end uh there are actually a couple different encodings that use equals 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 equals, 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 equals at the end um maybe i don't know how many use exactly that many equals but there are a number of ones that use you know two or or three or four um but yeah, uh, base 64 doesn't all, does base 64 always? We're actually doing a bunch at work right now with base 64 encoding, uh, trying to enc like encoding like uh, binary data, like uh, PDFs or Word docs. Um, so we, we, we'll get into that. This is a good question. Yeah, yeah, I, like I've really been on my cycling game since the pandemic started, you know, just trying to get out there, you know, as a, I, I had become a gym rat over the, like, like the two months previous to that, I've been really, like grinding, I really started enjoying the gym. And so it's nice to have something else to do again, but let's get going. Tonight, we're talking about operators, we're talking about expressions, and we're talking about conditional logic. Sounds like a lot of stuff. Um, and maybe it'll be a lot of stuff, I don't know. Sometimes I, I don't have a good eye for this stuff, but I think, you know, the amount of, I think the concepts are, I think this stuff falls in line with the way that we think as people um so i think it'll i think it'll be okay but express yourself smooth operator but only on one condition that's what we're doing tonight so tonight logic that's logic you know whether you like it or not you still logic let's compare comparison operators that's the first thing we're gonna talk about i don't okay first off this is not the music for me i try to i try to switch up the playlist but like it's probably fine but it's really not doing it for me so we gotta go back to the uh, the no copyright lo-fi because this is killing me. It's not killing me. I don't hate it. It's just so different. Let's see. No copyright lo-fi. I'll, I'll I'll find some good playlists. I'm gonna create some as well. All right. This is more. This is more my more my style. Uh, let's see. I think the stream will help me prepare for my interview tomorrow afternoon. It might. Uh, first off, what do you, uh, first off, definitely good luck. What are you interviewing for? I, I'm super interested in what you're interviewing for. It might, and maybe we can give you some tips. Uh, maybe we can give you some tips for what you're doing, so. Okay, comparison operators, let's compare. This is a pretty important thing. So in a programming language, we can use it to compare values. We can do it to compare things. Uh, the first thing I want you to know about comparison operators, I was going to give you, you know, a lot of information, a wall of text and stuff. No, we're not going to do that. We're going to hop right into using it. But comparison operators, uh, they are they're uh, they're there to compare what's on the left to what's on the right. So all these things um, will have something on the left side and on the right side as well. And they all are comparing for different values for different uh, use cases. And we can talk about those now. So. The first, uh, actually, the first thing I want you to know um, is actually the comparison operators, and we're gonna start using all of our terms, is comparison operators always give you a Boolean value. All right, break it down, Boolean value. Remember, do we remember what Boolean values are? That is true or false. Um, yeah, that's true or false. So these will always result in a true or false value. So they are comparing two things and they're determining if that is true or if it is false. Now let's go through with that and find out what that means. Uh, first, let me open this up. Okay, 
So the first type of comparison operator we have are equality operators. So this checks that the thing that's on the left is checking if it's if it is equal to the thing on the right. And this can mean a number of things. So let's see what this equality item looks like. Mm -mm, whoops. Let's see what this looks like uh, in code. And we're just gonna go down all of them. We're gonna spend time with each of them. So uh, don't sweat it. We're not gonna try to rush past any of them. Oh, ZSH has an update. Let's go ahead and do it. And you don't necessarily need to um, do anything. You can hop into repo.it if you want. Um, I wouldn't really focus right now on creating any files. We'll get there when we're doing that. But uh, I don't think you need to do that right now. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to first go into my Python interpreter. So I'm not gonna create any Python files. I'm gonna go to the command line and I'm gonna type in Python three. Uh, what's up, uh, Orhan, Orhant girl. Uh, I'll go with that. Uh, or ant girl, or ant, got it. Got it third time. OS, this is, uh, my operating system is actually Ubuntu. Uh, it's Ubuntu 20.04. Uh, I'm usually using a pop OS, uh, but it is Linux. Um, it is a Debian based distribution, but it's, it's Ubuntu. Um, yeah. Orhan Tugrul. I'm gonna go with that. I probably said that wrong too, but uh, spell it phonetically, like say it phonetically for me. I'll get it right. I'll remember. <laughs> I mean, I was way off. I was not. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. I'll get that. Um, okay, so. Again, an interpreted language like Python, we can drop into the interpreter. We can also open this up. This will be great because actually this is going to probably be important. Let's also I'm going to drop into the JavaScript one as well, um, just so that we can, you know, very quickly go back and forth and see some things. Software engineering and training position. The interview is to get into. Oh, yeah, that's great. Uh, 20 week internal. That's that's dope. Yes, I think tonight will probably help you actually. Uh, I think they would, yeah, I, I think so. I think the concepts that we're going over tonight uh, might be pretty helpful for that. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Um, um, what are we talking about? Uh, quality operators, again, what these operators do uh, is it's comparing what's on the left uh, to what's on the right. The equality one checks if the thing on the left is equal to the thing on the right. So let's see what that looks like. Uh, if I say, basically, you can read it like this. When you see uh, an operator, uh, so it's gonna look like a double equals or it's gonna be two signs kind of together. Um, and if I say is five equal to five, and that's kind of how you wanna read it. Is the thing on the left equal to the thing on the right? That's, that's how you wanna read it. And again, when you read it like that, uh, in your mind, you're automatically stating really that it's gonna return to you a true or a false value. So we know that these are gonna return a true or false. So if I check if is five equal to five, Yes, yes it is. So that is a true statement. Is this a true statement? And that is what you're checking for. Uh, you're always gonna be writing these to check if it is true or false. So is five equal to four? No, it's not equal to four. Makes sense. We know that five is not equal to four. Now, um, okay, so we are comparing numbers right now. Uh, you can compare everything. Uh, so I can say is five equal to five. And again, that's actually wrong. Why is that wrong? Uh, this is wrong because it, it didn't give us, it gave us an error, cannot assign to literal. Again, we are doing equality operators. Uh, we're not doing assignment operators. So you need two equals, two equals equals this. If we use one equals, we are trying to set the thing on the left equal to the thing on the right. That is how uh, you should be thinking about variables right now. That when you see a single equals, that is not a comparison operator. And once you see those two things, you are comparing. Uh, so let's check that again. Let's do five equals equals five, false. The string five is not equal to the number five. But what about something like this? Is five, the five of a, a string five, is it equal to an integer five? What do you think, what do we think is gonna happen here? What do we think is gonna happen? You can compare Boolean? Yes, you can compare Boolean. MG says false, correct, false. Check this out, MG. This is, that was in Python, check this out. Hey, this, I may be wrong about this, um, but this is JavaScript now. Is five equal to string five? Look at that, look at that. Now, I only, I only say this, I'm only showing you this to express to you that um, different languages uh, handle 
um, types and truthy and truthy values differently. Um, so values that may be true, uh, they handle them differently, truthy or falsy. Um, and so you have to be cognizant of that uh, per language. Uh, every statically typed language is gonna give you, it's gonna give you this is false. Like this is not a thing. Like we can do this in, uh, we, can, we can do this in Go. Um, can I do this? Invalid mismatch type. I can't even, I can't, yeah, I can't even compare them. Uh, I can't even compare them like this. Um, but if I run around like this, it's true. So I can't even, I can't even compare them inside of a statically typed language like Go. Um, but yeah, but you can see in something like JavaScript, that's super weird. Uh, JavaScript does give you another method uh, to, to make sure these are true. Um, I could put another equals. This is only a JavaScript thing, so um, don't worry about this right now, but a, a third equals will give us a thing. Uh, third equals in JavaScript says, hey, check not only the value, but also check the type as well. Um, so, but in Python, in most, in a lot of languages, this is what you're gonna get. The string of five is not equal to the integer of five. They are two different pieces of data, two different data types. Uh, and so, yeah, uh, you guys wanted to check, uh, is true equal to false? That is false, it is not equal, uh, but is true equal to true? Absolutely, it is in fact equal to true. So the equality operator is to check if two things are equal and you can use, like you will use this for a lot of things. Um, you'll use it often. Uh, it is a pretty important concept to understand. So equality, probably the most simple. Uh, and it, again, it is saying, hey, is the thing on the left equal to the thing on the right? Um, and you know, it'll compare any kind of data types. But let's check something like this. Is 5.0, is 5.0 equal to five? And we get true here, actually. And I wonder, um, well, it's definitely gonna be true here. Um, but what about here? I don't know. I don't know if, Go, I don't know what Go's gonna do with this. 5.0, it's 5.0 and five. Uh, the, can you compare those? And yes, you can. They're both number types. Uh, they can be compared. Um, so it can be interesting with that. So anyone have any questions on equality operators? Checking if two things are equal, the thing on the right and thing on the left. Anyone have any questions about this? Can you, can you run a clear in here? No. Okay, there we go. I don't have JS. Yeah, you don't, you don't gotta, you don't have to, you don't need JS. Um, no big deal. Does Java not take ASCII uh, address of five? Uh, I don't, I don't know about Java, to be honest. No idea about Java. Um, okay, so that is the equality operator. Checking if two things are equal, you will do this a lot. Now, if you can check if two things are equal, you can also check if they're not equal. So this is just the inverse of what we just did. And this can be confusing. I actually know people who um, who pretty much refuse to use inequality operators because some, because again, you know, they're just, they're inverses of each other. So you can almost like, you can kind of use them interchangeably uh, depending on the way that you put your statements. But let's look at what that looks like. So if I want to check if two things are equal, um, actually, I want Python over here, not to node. And I want to say is five not equal to five. What do you think this will return? And this this is the part that gets so confusing. Is the is five not equal to five? And and this this gets confusing on the because it only returns a boolean value. It's really annoying. So I mean, it's sign. Oh yeah, COVID sex. I'm sorry I missed that too, but yes. Is five not equal to five? This is false. Uh, it's false because um, it's, it's, it is a false statement uh, because they are equal. Because they this thing right here is will return true if these two things are not equal. It's checking. Um, for things to not be equal. And if they're not equal, it says, yep, this is correct. These two things are not equal to each other. Uh, but if they are equal to each other, that's the only case in which this will return false. So any other value four will give us true. Any any other value will give us true. Uh, false will give us true. Uh, true, uh, what will true give us? True will give us true. Everything else will give us true except for the number five. So again, it's one thing checks if they're equal. So 
equality operator only returns true if the two things are equal and the inequality operator always returns true as long as they are not equal so it can be pretty confusing and this is why people kind of re this is why there are people who refuse to use these inequality operators but yes let's try javascript so it is again uh let's go a bigger number i don't know why is nine not equal to nine and false it is it is same thing uh for every just just about everything else but it, again you're gonna get the it's not e not equal to nine and we are going to get the false here because it sees these two things as equal even though they are not but i could go ahead and do this again uh but all the inverse ones that we're going to talk about tonight are, are confusing whenever you see that exclamation point that kind of means not and we're going to get there in a little bit but um it is it is very confusing it's very confusing um so don't don't worry if you're like oh i'm not i'm not following that again not equals is checking it will return true if the two things are not equal so it's it's kind of confirming that the two things are not equal to each other so is nine not equal to 10 correct nine is not equal to 10 true statement nine is not equal to 10. so um and again you have the same things in go you can see here this is why we're doing things in multiple languages um this has the same you know the same operators here is nine not equal to 10 run this will be a true statement because nine is in fact not equal to 10. it's comparing nine to 10 it's comparing that they're not equal whoops and it says hey this is a true statement is nine equal to nine is nine not equal to nine that is a false statement because nine is in fact equal to nine very confusing um it, 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 it's okay if it takes you a while to kind of wrap your head around that. Like I said, you can almost always just use equality operators. Um, you can almost always flip your statements around to make it uh, equality instead of inequality. There are times when it makes, there are times when it makes more sense, um, but I'm not sure I've run into a time where I had to use an inequality operator, but I, I use it. I definitely do it. I was doing equations like five equals four plus one. Ah, do all languages follow PEMDAS? I love it. I, first off, we're gonna, uh, let's wait till we get to math operators next. I really wanna talk, I wanna talk about PEMDAS uh, when we get there. That is a great question. I'm not gonna lose your question because that is mm, phenomenal. I love it. Okay, so, uh, so inequality. We have equality, checking if they're equal. Inequality, checking if they're not equal. Now, now we have greater than and less than I'm gonna run through both of those together. So one of them, uh, back to your math class, it, this used to be super hard for me to remember. Uh, you know, there's just little arrows greater than. Um, I, I learned that the alligator always wants to eat the bigger number. Um, so that that helped. Um, and then uh, you, you, you always read the statement from left to right. So we can talk about that in a little bit, but uh, greater than checks if the value on the left is greater than the value on the right. Cool. And then flipped around, it says, is the value on the left less than the value on the right? And again, um, the for this one, the alligator mouth will always be open to the bit, like the bigger number will make it true. If the alligator mouth is pointed at the bigger number, this will be a true statement. Uh, so whenever you see these, uh, whether you know it's greater than or less than, just know that the thing that'll make this true the thing that'll make either one of these true is if this alligator mouth is open to the to the larger number. And so let's take a look at that. Um, and again, we're talking about numbers. There are, okay, we're gonna see it now. Let's just do it. So is 100, is it greater than 100? This is a, well, let's do something we know. Is greater, is, not, is 100 greater than one? Yes, true. 100 is greater than one. So it's gonna return a true statement. Is 100 greater than 150? No, 100 is less than 150. So if we do this, this is a false statement. So every number that is less than 100 will uh, will print true. Everything above it will print false. What does this equal though? Is 100 greater than 100? Right hand, left hand, I've never done that one before, but okay, okay. Is 100 greater than 100? Pretty pretty uh pretty interesting concept no 100 is not greater than 100 this is a false statement completely false statement 100 is equal to 100 so it can't be greater than 100 and so that's what we get there um but what happens if you do 
What happens if you do something like this? Is 100. <laughs> is 100 greater than 100? Let's just see what happens, you know? You wanna compare types? False, false. <laughs> 100 is not greater than 100. Um, false, so uh, what it's doing here actually, check this out. Uh, actually, that's not what I meant to do. I meant to do this. True, we got a true here. Why did we get a true? Uh, we got a true because it's actually comparing the, uh, pretty sure it's just comparing the number of letters in the string. Um, it's checking the number of letters in a string uh, rather than anything else. So we learned about length. The length of 100 is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, and this is only one, two, three, four, five, six. And so therefore this is a true statement because it's doing that. So again, you put a bunch of crap in here. And as long as this one over here has less, this will be a true statement. And again, it works vice versa. So we did uh, greater than up there. And if we do less than, we do is 100 less than one. So we'll do the same numbers. If this one was true, this is the inverse. So it'll obviously be false. Is 100 less than one? No, 100 is in fact greater than one. So this is a false statement. This comparison operator is false. Um, <clears throat> let's do 150. Is 100 less than 150? Yes, it is. So this is a true statement. Hit enter. This is a true statement. And is 100 less than 100? No, that is in fact a false statement. 100 is not less than 100. It is equal to 100. And that is a false statement. So that is equal. Uh, that's equality operator. Inequality operator. And uh, greater than and less than. Okay. So play like I definitely want you to play with these like have go have at it with these compare different types We can do true false in there completely fine um, And and see what they get and see why they see why they give it to you again different languages Will give you different outputs in different scenarios. They do not all handle data types uh, things the same um, so uh, you need to be cognizant of that I've seen people run into all kinds of problems because they didn't know in this new language they were learning that uh, it handles some of these things differently. Okay, the last the last two, now that we learned greater than and less than, now we can learn greater than and equal to or less than and equal to. So what's the difference between greater than and less than and greater than and equal to or less than and equal to? It is simply a an extra condi condition. It is an and condition. We're gonna learn about ands later. Uh, or sorry, we're gonna learn about or conditions later. It is an or condition. It's greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to. Um, and that 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 or is a is a very key word. Uh, it's it's a yeah, it's it's a key word. Strings don't always register as larger than integers. So let's see that real quick. There's a string of s. Is it larger than five? Uh, that does not work in Python. But is this larger than five? False. Um, but is it if I do one more letter? False. False. Interesting. Um, I don't know. I don't know what JavaScript is comparing, honestly. Uh, and I'll show you guys where you can go to kind of find out uh, how what is comparing and like and how it's comparing because I think that's pretty interesting as well. Oops, hold on, hold on. I did not mean to open that. I meant I didn't mean to open that either. I meant to click this. There we go. Got it. I need to move these metrics off to the right so I can see if my stream is dying. I forgot I was not looking at them. Uh, one second. Okay, there we go. Ready. Um, all right, so greater than or equal to, uh, it's, it's greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. So uh, all that happens now is it adds another, uh, it's doing two comparisons basically. It's saying, hey, is 100 greater than or equal to? Either one of those has to be true. If either one of those statements is true, this is a true statement. So if 100 is greater than or equal to, 
100, then this would be a true statement. So is this a true statement? Is 100 greater than or equal to 100? Yes, it is. Uh, it is equal to 100. Uh, so it can only, it can only, the value can only fit one of those values at a time. So it's, it's doing basically, it's giving you two options to make this true. Same thing um, for false, um, less than or equal to 100. It's also true. So either one of these is a true statement. Why? It's because of the equality statement uh, piece of it. So greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. Um, if it is equal, it is, it makes it true, uh, as opposed to before. Um, and so again, same thing, we can do the same thing with some of our strings here, uh, is, well, we already know that's, that's not going to be equal, but is 100, I don't know, same thing, same thing works. Uh, true. This is more than hundred. Uh, but if I also remove one of these letters, uh, these become, uh, is it still more? Oh, it's equal to, it's equal to. Uh, so same amount of letters, but uh, that makes them equal to each other. If I remove one more, this now becomes a false statement. Oh, maybe not. Maybe this is not working the way I thought it worked. Who knows? I don't know. Um, but yeah, greater than or equal to checks that the thing on the left is equal to the thing on the right, uh, is, is larger or equal to the thing on the right and less than checks if the thing on the left is less than or equal to the thing on the right. So a little bit of math in there, a um, little bit of like back to your uh, your math days a little bit. I know we, I know I learned some of these things in, in math class. JS Advocate checking in. Let's do all this in JS and blow people's mind. We already, yeah, we already did. We definitely already did some uh, some JavaScript stuff. Uh, we already showed them that uh, nine, um, nine and the nine integer and nine string are in fact the same thing in JavaScript. We know, we, we, we know, we, we're touching a bunch of different stuff, but yeah, uh, the goat actually ask away, definitely ask away. Uh, we're not, so, so yes, I, I really like, I really like that. We aren't there yet. Um, we're not, we're not there yet. We don't, uh, are we, there? uh, we have learned about data structures. Uh, so maybe we are there. Uh, interesting. Um, let's do it. So, is, I actually, we're not gonna talk, we're not gonna dive into this right now. Uh, I actually didn't know what that was gonna do in JavaScript, so I did that for a little, my own gratitude a little bit. We'll come back to this. We'll come back to this towards the end when we're playing around. We'll have, we'll have a lot of time to just mess around with a lot of the stuff tonight. Uh, that's very, so I write JavaScript uh, sometimes. <laughs> Um, but this is why, this is why I like Go. This is why I'm such a big Go fan because I don't want to know, like, I don't want to be confused about like, I, I, I don't want to start a rant. It's, it's so confusing. Uh, the first time, the first time I ever read it, like the first time I learned about, uh, about JavaScript's, uh, not, uh, double equals, not doing type checking as well. Um, it was actually in a production environment. Uh, I, had, I had deployed code to a production environment. Um, and the problem was it wasn't just broken. Like it seemed like my thing was working because the thing coming through was not always, I guess this was also my fault too. I should have been, I should have been casting. Um, but the, the, the value that was coming through was a number of different, uh, they were all numbers, but they should have been strings, but there was cases where it wouldn't be a string. Um, and those cases uh, had to do with corrupt files. And uh, it was causing some problems. It took us a long time to track that down. A long time. Uh, again, there's a lot of things that led to that, but if JavaScript wouldn't have allowed that, um, we it would never have been a problem anyway. Let's actually do type checking. That's what people get wrong. Double equals and triple equals both do type checking. The first thing they do. So then what is the, um, what is it? So it does type checking, but it just doesn't care. Is that what double equals uh, in JavaScript? I, again, I, I don't know uh, for JavaScript. Um, I wonder what, if it is checking type in both in the double equals, what is the, what's the caveat there? What is the thing that happens? Uh, what's the value that the triple, the third equals has? Pretty interested in knowing that. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so comparison. Um, I, I, well, that I, to me, block squid, that would mean, that means, Oh yes, yes, double equals does type coercion. That seems whack. Why would it check type if it's gonna coerce it? 
like what if it's going to cast it to something else seems really weird to me but like hey i get it javascript's trying to be you know the one size fits all tool for everything it's trying to do everything anything and everything which you know it can be good it can be bad it can it can be fun uh, javascript is fun i'll tell you that javascript is fun but uh for someone who's not as disciplined as i should be at things uh i do i don't like that freedom to be 100 percent honest okay we learned a little bit about math operators last time and now we can get back to your question imjean about pemdas very very important uh, very very important now if people now that you all know how to you know now that after this you're going to know how to do some math operations from the computer uh you no longer have to look stupid responding i'm not i'm not calling stupid i'm just saying a lot of us are out here looking dumb responding to all these facebook uh things like oh my 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 auntie couldn't figure this one out my auntie said it was 12 and it'd be like parentheses three plus two times eight or whatever like and everyone's arguing in the comments about what it is now you can just write a little program to figure it out for you okay so stop stop just responding to those things um stop responding just write a little python a little bit right, drop into the python interpreter do the math yourself in there uh but math operators we talk about it a little bit again it's pretty simple you have addition you have subtraction multiplication division uh and modulo and exponent so we talk about modulus or modulo um that's the one we'll focus on today we're gonna do all of them real quick uh all programming languages have have these um you can do you know 10 plus 2000 is 2010 symbol math um and that's probably not a surprise to you look at this uh, like you know plus there's a u in there so it's gonna fail i made a mistake whoa there's a little bit of delay here uh so yes uh you can type in a bunch of stuff you can do a minus and you know uh the simple math things you can do so 100 divided by five i'm gonna give us 20. um I want you to be, I want you to see what uh, these different math types return in different languages. That's something you should be playing around with uh, as well. Uh, even though this is an even division, it looks like Python, uh, Python three at least, uh, automatically returned us. We, we put in two integers, integer here, an integer here, and it returned us a float. Um, it returned us a float. Um, so just be cognizant of that. I don't think, I don't think JavaScript will do that. Maybe it will. Uh, so what did it do? 100 divided by five maybe, maybe it will uh and you see it did not return as a float or it did not display as it did not display as a float um uh we can see some, that in go as well um let's hop back into the go playground and again 100 divided by five and let's see what this does in fact return for us it returns us an integer as well so that's a little bit interesting um so you can play around with that. Uh, although I put these in here as math operators, um, these operators do not only apply to integers or floats, uh, division, multiplication, subtraction, addition. Um, they do work with other things, uh, with other types. We've seen some things, we've seen the addition sign work with strings. We've, we've done string concatenation. Uh, it's a way of adding strings together end to end. Uh, so you can in fact do things like Aaron plus Brooks. And it will just stick them together and make it Aaron Brooks, but you cannot do Aaron minus Brooks. Now, what are we in? Are we in Python or are we in Node? Uh, we are in Node. Uh, we'll check this out. Let's try some of the other ones. Can I do Aaron divided by Brooks? No, I cannot get not a number. Uh, but what happens if I do Aaron times Brooks? Again, not a number, but check this out. What if I do Aaron like divided by five? Not a number. What if I do Aaron times five? Hmm, interesting. Okay, let's check Python. So let's try there. Plus Brooks. Same thing. Six it together. Uh, it concatenates these strings. Uh, again, it's the process of adding strings together end to end. One way we can do it. Uh, and then if we do, you know, minus just to make sure we get the same stuff. Type error we get. We get a we do divided by you know, type error doesn't work. We do times we get uh, cannot multiply 
uh, two strings together. But let's try, you know, Aaron times five. And in Python, this works. I can, in fact, multiply, multiply a string by a number. And what it will do is it will um, basically, so um, a, a multiplication is essentially a function of addition, uh, to be 100% honest. Uh, so um, what it's doing is because you can add strings together, because you know you can add you know two strings together, uh, you can essentially do the same thing. Uh, you can add Aaron together five times basically, and so that's what you get here. Multiplication is a function of addition. Um, so you can do that, uh, which is interesting. What happens if you switch it around? What if I do uh, five times Aaron? What do we get? And we get exactly the same thing. Why do we get the same thing? We get the same thing because uh, uh, order doesn't matter. And um, I forgot what the I forgot whatever the theory or the principle was to tell you that order doesn't matter for things like uh, addition and multiplication. So uh, yeah, you can do that. Try one is, oh, I like that. Okay, hold on. So going back to the um, comparison a little bit, it's about coercion. So header is a primitive type um, and inequality primitive types are casted to chatting as a Boolean primitive now since you have one expression Boolean now the others cause Boolean as well is in coercion with boolean is that it has to uh, go to the lookup table that's fair um that's fair um it's still stupid <laughs> no the great explanation is dumb I, it's, it's really dumb but i i understand i understand how in languages like javascript i understand how we get to these weird points um but yeah ah commute commute commutative commute uh, com commutation rule okay great now i know i'm you know taking me back again math math is great um that rule that rule uh the only property i remember is a uh, transitive property i don't know when that actually what that means anymore but i'm gonna say it tonight at least twice for the fun of it so that you think that i'm smart uh i'm gonna just drop it i'm just drop this term like it was nothing and i'm gonna keep moving so i'll tell you now just don't so you don't say anything when i say it incorrectly okay so um math uh in in these languages uh, uh does follow pemdas all right everyone this is the most important part of pemdas which i'm actually very surprised I, the only thing i, I remember from my math classes is the rules of PEMDAS and it's helped me so far. And it's why I always get those Facebook uh, posts correct because what is PEMDAS? Uh, what is the order of operations? The order of operations uh, involves, um, you know, uh, functions of mathematics and the order of their importance, the order, the, the order in which you perform them. Now, PEMDAS, what is PEMDAS? It is an acronym for parentheses uh uh exponents multiplication division uh was it addition and subtraction so these things are to be followed in order but there's uh there's some rules in there um the most specific one that everyone everyone gets wrong is everyone thinks multiplication is more important than division uh it is not multiple it is not uh parentheses exponents multiplication then division it is multiplication or division in order from left to right uh, as is with addition and subtraction people seem to remember addition and subtraction but not uh addition uh not multiplication and division this is the most important piece so what this means is that uh, parentheses will always be um uh read first so if i do something like four plus six whoa that was not a four four plus six plus uh parentheses seven plus two this means that the first thing that will get evaluated in this math is seven plus two the thing inside of the parentheses will always be evaluated first uh so evaluated first in order from left to right so there are other parentheses uh that will happen as well but just seven plus two so this will get evaluated first it's nine uh in this case wouldn't really matter um, in this example, it wouldn't really matter, uh, but it might matter if, well, I'll change it so it matters more. Uh, so this will equal the same regardless whether these parentheses are there or not, because I'm just doing addition and addition uh, is all, is co commuted, commutative, com commutative. Yeah, I don't know. Um, that, that That's the word. Um, but, uh, but if you were to throw in another thing in here, like 
this uh maybe we want to do times here and maybe we want to put the parentheses here there's a little more pim dossi right here uh commute commutative i'm gonna keep saying it like that that's just how i say it now i might have known it uh in my past but uh i you know i know it now did you retire did i retire uh no so uh, uh oh this one's associative law look at all these mathematicians in here bunch of geniuses i'm proud of you all um uh but back to what it is uh so parentheses will happen first parentheses will get uh they, they will get operated on first these operators will happen first um and then multiplication and division or division from in order from left to right then addition and subtraction uh but because parentheses are first um if i do it this way if i remove these people will go through and they'll say four plus six is 10 and uh and 10 plus 7 is 17 and then they'll multiply 17 by 2. this is not the way that you solve this because you can see when we hit this the total is 24 actually and that's because because of pemdos because of the order of operations seven times two takes place first before anything else happens so seven times two is what 14 so we have 10 plus 14 this is you know it, it ends up being four plus six plus 14 is what it ends up becoming because it evaluates this first but you can in fact do something like this to make it a little if you want it to be more like the way you write it you'd have to say all right do these things first so do the parentheses first so then we will get four plus six plus seven which would be 17 then you multiply that by two and you get uh 30 or, yeah, there we go. There we go. Like I, I knew at the same time it popped up. My mind works just as fast as a computer. Don't sweat it. Um, so the, these do in fact, uh, the, the order of operations is super important. Computers do follow those things. Uh, so parentheses, then exponents, because exponents are here. Um, uh, multiplication and division in or, or division in order from left to right. And, uh, and then addition and subtraction. Pretty important, I would check it out. You don't need to check out, check out all these laws. I did not retire, I have no idea what that question means. Um, I I didn't retire, I wish, I wish I, I, I wish I could retire. That would be pretty nice. Um, I don't know what I would do with it myself. But associative law, maybe, maybe I'll go study. Uh, maybe I'll go learn some math. Maybe there's like a, you know, maybe I'll go on like Skillshare or something uh, and get real good at math. And uh, actually, I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an avid YouTube watcher uh, and those master classes keep coming up. There are two that come up for me in, in particular. One is the one with the guy, the negotiator guy. That guy's great. He's a, he almost got me. He almost got me like five times until I saw that class was 200 and something dollars. But the one I want is the Neil deGrasse, Neil deGrasse Tyson one. I want to be an astrophysicist by taking a master class in astrophysicist, astrophysician. This is, that thing, I'm gonna be an astrophysicist. I'm gonna know all about qu qu quasars and quote and worlds and moons and black holes. Okay, yeah, that's what we're gonna do there. And I'm gonna know it. I'm gonna be the best astro physician on the planet. I'm gonna take care of planets. I'm gonna take care of spaceships. I'm gonna know about force, all that stuff. See, man, we all we're smart out here. We, you, you know, big brain, big brain out here. Um, but I do, I do want to take that master class. I'm not going to lie. I, I'm actually pretty interested in it. Uh, just to kind of something I've always been kind of interested in space really confuses me. Uh, it like my brain can't comprehend, uh, the vastness of it. Uh, and so, you know, it'd be cool to check out and not come teach you all what I found out in the master class. And then I'll probably get in trouble because I'm probably just going to share everything. I'm probably just going to teach you all the same thing that I just watched in the master class, but whatever, you know, I pay for it. Shoot, unless they want to give it to me for free. Um, but yeah, I, I like math. You don't need to go back and learn all the, all of the, uh, uh, all the laws and the theories and theorems, but you need to know uh, about the order of operations. Uh, it is good to know uh, some of the basic math things. Now, modulo or modulus, let's cover that one more time uh, because it is in fact important um, and it's gonna be used a lot. We're probably gonna use it tonight if we write a little bit of a fizz buzzy application um, to put together everything that we learned tonight. Uh, but modulo or modulus, we learned that division is, you know, it's division. Five divided by five equals one. But modulo or modulus returns the remainder rather than the value. So uh, what is the remainder of five divided by five? 
there is no remainder it goes into it evenly um whoops so it in fact returns zero this is available to you in every language that i know of uh it is i've used modulo more in real world applications than i have with division than i have divi uh, division so just uh I don't know. Some people tell me it's not important at all. Some people tell me it's amazing. I think, uh, yeah, it, it, I've used it more in real code than I have division, just so you know. Um, but I also don't do a lot of stuff with, you know, numbers. Like I don't, uh, I don't, I, all the applications I've used, I've built, I don't really deal with, uh, you know, a lot of numbers. Uh, so, you know, your experience may vary, but it's something that's good to know. Modulus, it is division, but it returns the remainder. What is this best for? This is best for determining if something is divisible by something else. Again, we used it a little bit last time because we know we can use it uh, to determine if a number is even or not. Uh, and so if a number is even, uh, it is that means it's evenly divisible by two. That means two can go into that number in even amount of times. Um, I, I, you know, there's no remainder. There's nothing left over. Um, and so you can use modulo to check for that. And we did that last time a little bit. Python is so stupid about modulo. Let's try 3.3 3 mod 3, 3.3 mod 3. Uh, uh, that hurt my brain. Uh, excuse me. There should be 0.3 left over for me, but instead you're gonna give me 0.299998. <sighs> I don't like this, but you know, I mean, I don't like. I said I don't do that much with math. Uh, so let's let's, let's check this here. Uh, now now I want to see what this does in every language. Uh, so this is like a no, this is like a thing everywhere. Seems like there's a thing everywhere. And if it's a thing everywhere, I'm okay with consistency uh, because that means it's probably a computer problem. And I'm okay with it being a computer problem. Um, it's not defined on untyped float. Interesting. Can I do this? Just wondering. Invalid operation. Interesting. I'll find out why I can't do that. I don't know. I don't know why I can't do this. Uh, always something fun to do. Like I said, your boy don't deal with numbers that much. So that's nice. What if you do 3.3 .3 mod 3.0? Um, good question. Let's try that out. Let's try all the things. 3.3 .3 mod 3.0. And we get the same exact thing uh, as we got before somehow. Uh, and so I'm just to be honest with you uh, from everything I know about astrophysics, in computers, uh, I'm pretty sure uh, this 0000000.2 000 000 000 000 000 000 000 uh, actually uh, got gobbled up by um, by the dark matter um, and is actually in a parallel universe uh, with the uh, quantum uh, 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 positively charged electrons. And that's where they went. 3.3 and 3.1, let's try that. 3.3, let's try it again. I just gave you your explanation. You now know exactly why. So it's dark matter. Oh, okay. We get, a, get something a little bit different here, you know? Numbers a little bit different. Yeah, great. You, all my mathematicians out there, all the all the people, not even mathematicians. Uh, I'm sure people have already explained it here why. Let's see. Floating point numbers are hard. That, that uh, I always hear that, but I don't deal with them that much. Modulo should never return a float. Um, well, it just did. Um, it does. It's difficult to represent an infinite amount of numbers and infinite. Yeah, that, that's true. Um, I I agree with that. So that 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 makes sense to me. That really does make sense to me. It's hard to represent an infinite amount, but it seems like it really feels like. Uh, I wonder what kind of. Uh, it seems that you could handle this. It seems like this could be handled. It, it, it really feels like this could be handled. Um, but hey, I, you know, I've never written a programming language. So I don't know. I definitely don't know. Okay, the challenge is best. Uh, yes, yes, I am. I really am. Okay, so now that you know about some of the math stuff, um, we'll do some exponent stuff. But honestly, like I've never touched I, I, like, not that I've, just, I've never seen even many like uh, coding problems that had to do a ton of stuff with exponents. Uh, but I mean, you can do exponents just like everything else. Um, so you're not sure how exponents work. Uh, three, 
to the power of three means uh we are multiplying three to to itself three times and there we get 27 so three times three equals nine and then nine times three again and so adding the third three so it's really this it's it, exponents are really three times three times three so you just got to refresh here so whatever the number here is you're going to multiply the base together by itself that many times so if it's three to the power of 33 three to the power whoa yeah there we go three to the power of 33 uh we're gonna get a much larger number and it's because it did three three times wow times three times three times three times I'm not gonna do it 33 times, but that is, uh, that's kind of how exponents work. If you haven't touched exponents in a long time and you just wanted a quick refresher on how exponents work, uh, just know that everything to the power of zero is always one. Everything to the power of one is always itself. That is a major point. Even this number right here to the power of zero is always one. Just some good math knowledge to know right there. Everything to the power of one is always itself. So, uh, yeah, there we go. There we go. Um, that is exponents. Let's move on from math operators. Cause those are dope. Assignment operators. Assignment operators are exciting. Um, we just learned about comparison operators. So we learned how you compare the value on the left to the value on the right with equals, not equals, greater than, less than, greater than, equal to, less than, equal to. Now, we're talking about assignment operators. So this is where you are assigning the thing on the left to the thing on the right, um, or the value of the thing on the right. Um, and so what these assignment operators allow us to do is their shorthand method for allowing us to easily um, uh, assign values. Uh, it, it, it's short, it's a shorthand. Um, and so the addition assignment operator says, all right, I want you to add the thing that's on the right to the thing on the left. And then I want you to save the value. Um, I want you to save the value in the thing on the left. So uh, let me show you why that's weird. Like, and, and why that's confusing. Uh, so let's say we have a variable. I'm going to clear this. How do you clear? There we go. Um, I didn't want to do a Linux clear. I wanted to do a Python clear, but let's say you have a variable and let's say that variable is equal to seven. Let's say X is equal to seven. All right. Super nice. X equals seven. Great. So now the value of X, we assign the, va the value of seven to the, uh, to the variable X. So now if we want to do, we can print, let's print out X and see what X is. Whoa. Oh, whoops. Is this not Python? What am I in? I'm in node. Oh, sorry. I'm in node. Uh, why did it let me do? Okay. doesn't matter. Let's go back here. L we'll go back into there and we'll do it. Well, you know what? We started out doing it. Let's do it. Let X equal seven. Same thing. Um, what? X has already been declared. And now I'm going to console dot log X. And it is now uh, X is equal to seven. Why, uh, what, what, what's happening here? I don't know what's happening here. Someone, uh, yes, I console I logged it, but someone tell me what's, uh, why is it giving me this weird undefined when I do something? I don't like that. I feel like I'm being tricked. Also, what did it do here? I wanna know what it did up here um, in, in, Java, in, in JavaScript. Why did it let me do that? And what did it do for you? Since we have a JavaScript, uh, I, I, I really like having valuable resources. Undefined return from console.log. Why? You need to pre-declare global variables in JavaScript. Oh, interesting. Okay, I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. That works. Seven is automatically and dynamically creating a variable. Got it. Got, okay, that's very confusing um, for JavaScript. Okay, whatever. So let's, we're gonna do this here and we'll go back to that in a second and we're gonna do it in Go as well. Uh, but let's set a variable, again, X equal to seven. Um, and now if I print out X, it is in fact, it's gonna be seven. Um, so if I do, what, what happens if I do uh, X plus three? All right, it says 10. So, you know, it did the math. It did, we, we did some math here. Uh, we did an addition uh, operator here. 
And, but if we print X again, X is, is still seven. So we never change the value of X. How could we change the value of X? One way you could change the value of X is you can say now X equals, uh, because the variable it can change X plus three. If we wanted to add three to it, this is how we would basically add three to X and assign that value back to the variable X. So if I run this and I print X again, now look at that, X is in fact now 10, right? So we know if we just perform a math operation uh, on the, with the variable, it'll do it, but that, that, that won't get saved anywhere. The assignment operators allow for you to capture this information. So the same way we did uh, X equals three right here, right now X is 10, we just saw X being 10. Uh, if I do X plus equals three and I print out X, check that out. It added three and it captured the value. So when you see the assignment operators, uh, so plus three, a plus equals, minus equals, subtraction equals, division equals, all that, the, I said minus and then subtraction, whatever. Uh, what it's gonna do is, it's going to take what's on the right, it's going to perform whatever operation you told it to do, so it's gonna add these two things together, and then it's gonna assign the value, whatever that equals, uh, it's gonna assign that to the thing on the left. So it can be a little bit confusing uh, when you go through and you do this. Um, so, uh, same thing works for minus. So now if I do uh, X minus equals, let's say minus equals seven. When I print out X, what do you think we're gonna get here? I'm gonna run this, what do you think we're gonna get? Plus equals three is not the same as X equals X plus three. X equals X plus three has a side effect of, oh, uh, that's fair. Um, yes, that's so, while that, I mean, while that is, so while that is fair, it's the same thing. Like it, it's, it's, uh, it is the same. Um, yes, I, I think that for most people that doesn't, that won't matter for a long time. Um, uh, and I think that matters most in, in, I don't think for most people here, this, this won't matter at all. Oh, you can't do that in Python yet. You can do it in Python. Uh, there are languages you can't do it in. Um, there are a number of languages you can't do it in. I'm pretty sure you can do it in Go. Um, so if I do like uh, X, whoa, why is it? Why is it doing this to me? Do seven, and we simply do. Uh, it might not allow me to do an operator like this simply. Uh, an expression like this right inside of a print statement, but it might, uh, let's let's add five to it and let's run it. And yeah, um, I don't say, I didn't think it was gonna let me do this. You can, I'm pretty sure you can do this um, here though, Python assignment operator. Um, I just think it can't be done um, in that same, uh, that's Python. Let's see, Golang. Yeah, and add C plus A is operating. I know it has it, but I think I have to do it outside of this. Like, I think I would have to do uh, X plus equals five. And then I would just have to print X here. Um, just because of the way Python, I mean, just because the way Go works. So it does work, it, it, it's there. Uh, you have to work with it um, in a different way because of the expression that it is. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Ah, uh, yes, you can do plus plus in Python. Yes, you're, that is the one thing that always uh, gets me as well. Um, that is also why that is not listed here. We talked about it a little bit last time. Um, the plus pluses can be super annoying. So addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, modulo, uh, and exponents all do the same thing in Python only. These are, all of these are only available in Python. And I put these here for you to know that this is specifically Python. All these are not available in every language. Um, that's. It's pretty, it's kind of important, but these assign, assignment operators are important to just to know about. Uh, again, it's a, it's, it's a bit of a shorthand. Um, you'll, you'll see it written out. Um, you'll see it written out like this sometimes, but um, generally when you can, um, people generally will go ahead and do a plus equals here. Um, what do plus equals here? So are you supposed to remember, memorize all these things? Uh, eat. Yeah, uh, well, so no, I don't think you have to memorize all of them. I think you need to, I think you need to memorize all of these. 
all the math operations you can do. And I think for most people, um, the only math operations you're gonna have to remember is really modulus because uh, most people, at least, even if you're not good at it, uh, you, you know about addition and subtraction, multiplication and division. Um, and if you know about those, you only have to remember that you can, uh, you only have to remember what an assignment operator does. Uh, and, and then in the back of your mind, just know that you can do this to all the math operations. Um, it, it, you know, it's gonna take a little time to, yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess you have to remember it, remember, uh, memorize it. Uh, quick reference guide. Yes, I sent you one in the Google Classroom. So I actually think I sent you, I actually think I sent you this page, um, this exact page in the, it's interesting I found it again. Pretty sure I sent you this exact page as a quick reference. Um, also W3 schools is a good one. A little bit easier to see. Wow, I can, can't type. Um, and if we go down to like the Python section, um, tutorials, learn Python. I think in the learn Python section, there's probably operators right here. Maybe let's see. Uh, yeah, they have math. They have the math operators here with this, the arithmetic operators. So addition, subtraction, all this stuff. Uh, and they do have this stuff here. So I'll send this as well. Yes, W3 Skooks is exactly where you want to go. We get, we got to our spot simply by, uh, you know, I, I'm a master of the, uh, the SEO, um, but also without Google knowing what I like, what I really like, you know, if you mistype all your stuff, Google's like, they're like, Hey man, this, this guy, he's really into W3 Skooks, uh, but not W3 school. So they won't send me crappy programming things that I already have access to. Uh, if I, you know, I mistype a couple of searches, you know, sometimes you got to circumvent all that SEO. Uh, yeah. So you do have to, I mean, yeah, you kind of got to memorize them, um, but you'll memorize them as you use them. But I think it's right now, just know about them. Uh, you'll know, you'll know, knowing that they exist will allow you to look them up later. Um, it, the most important part is that, again, knowing what you can do with a programming language is, is what really helps you. Okay, <clears throat> logical operators. These ones are great. Um, so you can string together pieces of logic um, to, uh, and, and, and comparison operators, uh, you can string them together to make bigger decisions uh, or decisions with larger scope. Um, so let's take a look at what, what that means. Right here on the slides, we have and, or and not this is not and or not it is and or and not they are uh, all different things uh, at the bottom three are exactly the same thing uh it is and or and not i know uh, you, yeah it's different maybe i should put them side by side uh python uh, i don't like python because it has words i mean i do like python but it the words threw me off um, and most, and a lot of other languages, they use these symbols to do the same thing. Uh, but again, what these allow you to do is to chain together some of this logic. So, um, even though you have these, uh, you use these with comparison operators, um, but you can use the, like using them chains together multiple comparison operation statements, uh, multiple expressions and the, the value of it is still always going to be a true or false. It's going to, you're going to have multiple, uh, multiple options. So maybe you'll have, maybe you'll be checking is five equal to five and is nine equal to nine or something. Um, and so that, and is an actual thing, uh, but both of those, like it's comparing both of those, but it will only deliver you one in value. So let's see how that works to make that make a little more sense. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to do an and operator, the and operator. Um, the and logical operator says, Hey, the thing on the left has to be true. And the thing on the right has to be true for me to evaluate to true. So if it, if it's an and statement, uh, if you have an and statement, the thing on the left has to be true and the thing on the right has to be true, um, for, uh, for the statement itself to be true. So let's see what that looks like. So again, I say five is equal to five and uh, that's if are we in python yeah in python i'm pretty sure it's and i wish i had some colors here pretty sure it's just the word and and like i said i've been messing around with so many languages i never remember which one's which and you can say is hello 
equal to hello so it's gonna do two comparisons here it's gonna this is gonna return a true or false value so is five equal to five yep five is equal to five um and is hello equal to hello and it looked to be about the same so probably uh so because both of these are true because this is true and this is true the whole statement becomes true all right so if this is true and this is true the whole thing is true so for and statements that's what has to happen that's the only thing that can return true if one of these even one of these becomes false is hello equal to hell no it's not hello hell no uh and so this statement now becomes false because this is true and this is false so both of these have to be true for it to be true uh, and that part can be a little bit confusing um, but it, that's always how it works uh, for and statements both things have to be true this has to be true and this thing has to be true if they're both false let's make both of these false this is just to show you that it's still false the only thing that'll make an and statement true is if the thing on the left is true and the thing on the right evaluates is true as well any questions so far about that anything you want me to try um not a number equals not a number and we are gonna get not a number is not defined because that's not actually uh, uh, a type um, here in, it's not actually a, a type here in uh, in Python. Uh, maybe you want me to try that in JavaScript? And not a number is not equal to not a number. I, I, I don't know why. I have no idea why again. This is this is why we chose Python and go to go with because uh, I mean this this also may make sense um, for computers uh, not a number It does like I don't know can a non-existent thing be equal to a non-existent thing. I don't know. I have no idea um, I have no idea do uh, MD string equal to uh, So this will get into truthy and falsy values. We're gonna talk about truthy and falsy values. This makes sense uh, I under, I understand truthy and falsy values in JavaScript, and I've learned how to utilize them effectively. Um, and I get it. Like I hated it at first, but I I, I get it. Uh, an empty string being equal to zero is fine. This should make a little more sense to you. This is in JavaScript. Um, why an empty string is equal to zero? We did this. We did this when we were evaluating Boolean values, uh, and we were when we were doing zero values. Remember when we did zero values of different data types? Uh, and we saw that some of these empty things were uh, were in fact zero. So, yeah. Dynamic typing is weird. It's weird. I no, it's weird. I I I from day one. That's something I'll never back down from. Is I think that I I'm. I'll do it, uh, but I find dynamic typing to be uncomfortable. And at first, it's fun. At first, it uh, when you first start learning how to code, uh, I think it's I think it's nice to not have those guardrails. Um, but I think it presents its own set of challenges later on in your coding career. Um, you know, with those guardrails, it's, it's pretty interesting. Dynamic typing is super weird. You just don't know what it's gonna do. You have no idea. So that's, yeah, it's it's mentally static. Anyways, I like it. Funny interviews. I hate static type language when you're trying to do rapid prototyping. One, that is very true. I will. I I do agree with that. Um, I I I don't. I don't like if I was gonna do. If I was gonna walk in and do an interview. Um, or or, or, or a rapid prototype. Um, yeah. Dynamically typed languages are better for the, for the quick up and running. Uh, get going to. They're also easier to kind of go through and follow your logic a little bit better. You just don't have to handle as much. Um. Yeah, you still have to handle as much, uh, so it's, it's nice. What did you code a program in? Um, oddly enough, I do. I write for someone who doesn't know JavaScript very well. I write it. I write a lot of React um, because I, I'm I'm a technical lead for a for a project that is written in React. But I'm an I'm an infrastructure person. I'm a DevOps person. Uh, so I I mean mostly for my own projects and things. Uh, I write mostly. I write. I still write a ton of Bash, uh, but I write Go. I use Go as much as I can. Um, uh, but I, I probably write JavaScript the most. I write Python. We do a lot of Python scripting as well. So I, I write a lot of Python scripts uh, as well. But like, it's interesting because I find that like, 
when you're doing python scripting you don't pick up python as well as you I, I i'm not as good as python as i feel like i should be for how many python scripts i've written uh because you're generally at least for the types of things that i do with systems i'm generally using the same uh the same little tools and bits and pieces over and over again um so yeah i don't know I love static language for a project that won't last forever. That's fair. That's why you use uh, JS for and TypeScript for actual coding. I like, I, I, I do, I do like TypeScript. Um, I like it a bit. I think the overhead of JavaScript, uh, I, I'm not, uh, I have strong feelings about Python's uh, package management system, uh, package management system. I have strong feelings about, you know, NPM and the state of NPM um, is, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's a bit of a mess, but it's also kind of cool, um, but yeah. What concept of programming coding do you feel you're best at? Uh, I don't know. I've never been asked that. Um, that's a that's a good interview question right there. What concepts of coding do you feel like you're best at? Ugh, I don't know. Um, I don't know because I use as as a non software engineer. I'm not a software engineer. Um, I use coding purely as a tool to solve uh to solve specific problems. So uh, I generally don't really care about um. I haven't in the past cared so much about um, a lot of really intense computer science concepts uh, because the goal, uh, the goal is, is is the code isn't the isn't the prime time thing here, whereas I feel like in most applications it is. Uh, so I don't know. As a, as a, it's a really that's a that's a tough question. Um, I will say um, one thing I'm proud of 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 kind of having a really good handle on uh, just because I've been extending my software engineering skills over the past few years is uh, is Go concurrency um, and and understanding how to make you know um, you know concurrent programs and 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 how to how to like architect um you know programs in a, in a good concurrent way um i don't know it's something i'm most uh i'm probably most proud of yeah i write a lot i write way too much yaml um people usually call devops engineers the yaml jockeys super super annoying uh i, I don't we don't we don't use um interestingly enough uh we're a little the way that we think about some of our stuff i don't we don't actually uh I'm not a fan of this is all side rants because we have some time. Uh, I'm not a fan of runtime configuration for anyone who's uh, as we get in our pipelines course, we'll do this stuff, but I am not a fan of runtime configuration. I have, I have discussions with people about this all the time. This is where my passion truly lies uh, again in the DevOps stuff, but uh, runtime configurations whack to me. Uh, and I think nowadays, if you're building anything new, it can almost always be avoided. It can almost always be avoided a runtime configuration meaning why would i want my server uh why would i want to use ansible to spin up a server uh to uh, why would i want to provision a server using like terraform and have ansible set it up uh so that mirrors can be down so that uh, i can have network blips that allow me not to get packages uh or, or like why do i mean to do that why not um why not pre-build golden images why not i, I don't understand uh, why, why have a server at all, to be 100% honest with you? I don't even know why, you know, I don't know. I have strong feelings about all that stuff. Um, just because I've managed I've managed lots of servers in a lot of different environments, a lot of systems. Uh, so yeah, strong, strong feelings. Uh, dope, that's what's up. Um, I, I, I'm actually, if I ever have to work a job again, uh, the goal is to not, is to work for myself. But if I ever have to work for a company again, I'm actually gonna do a stint as a pure software engineer. I'm actually gonna go from the infrastructure realm uh, and um, the goal is actually to do a pure software dev job for two years, if I if I ever have to do that again. Um, but yeah, Elixir, I've heard good things about Elixir. I have a good friend who loves Elixir. Um, Elixir's cool. Done PHP? Yeah, I've written a little bit of PHP, not in a long time, um, but I have written a little bit of PHP. As someone who, you know, uh, was kind of from a, a, a ops systems engineer background, done PHP, done some Perl scripting, done, you know, all that stuff. I was having a hard time being okay with Go having a C kind of syntax and also, a, uh, yeah, yes, yes. Yep, yep, he bites back, that's fair. Uh, I don't know C very well, so maybe that's, uh, you know, maybe that helps. Uh, why not just write Rust? I am, um, that's my that's my plan. I'm planning on learning Rust, next, uh, 100%. Do you do database? Uh, sh sure, um, I I know SQL pretty well. I, I've, I've managed tons of relational databases and Postgres. Uh, I know NoSQL databases pretty well. You know, I can deal heavily with Mongo or, or, uh, or what's the or DynamoDB or whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I'm pretty familiar with databases. 
Okay, a little bit of rant. We're back now. So, and thing on the left has to be true, and thing has to be on the right has to be true. Uh, can be pretty confusing. So, or is, uh, or is, uh, almost the inverse of, almost the inverse of, and um, if not, I don't want to call it the inverse. Seems kind of weird. Uh, but if we change this to, or. It says, hey, the thing on the left has to be true or the thing on the right has to be true. And I am true uh, for this statement to evaluate to true. It says either this only one thing has to be true. This is true or this is true makes me true. So uh, right now that's false because both of these are false statements. So it equals false. But if I make one of them true, the entire thing becomes true. And again, this is this is the same. Um, in any uh, thing, if you go to something like JavaScript, I, I think, I'm pretty sure JavaScript uses uh, uh, doesn't use the words. Uh, so JavaScript is like, you know, five equals five uh, and so and is double ampersands um, and six equals six. This is, in fact, a true statement. So this is true on the left and this is true on the right. And that says true. Uh, but if I do an or. Um, and I do or or looks like this or it's two pipes. Whoops, doesn't look like that. Or it looks like this. Uh, I was gonna tell you where on the keyboard the pipe was for you, but my keyboard is really weird and I don't know where it is on yours. Um, but again, this this means if if this is true or this is true, I am true. This 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 will evaluate to true if one of these is true. Uh, so the only way to get a false is to make sure both of these are false. Five equal to six and six equal to seven, both false statements. Therefore, this becomes a false statement. Mm -mm 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 -mm. The community is bigger, sadly. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, Rust seems to be growing substantially, especially um that like the interest in it ever since um discord put out that article about why they went from go to rust just super interesting because it, it, it the the way they put it out just made it seem really weird uh it, oh, most of their problems sound like they would have been solved by upgrading go but i understand as a systems guy i understand the difficulty of, of, of upgrading uh to major versions of software so i get it i i get it definitely get it do you prefer uh, relational or non-relational databases? It's a good question. I I I prefer non-relational databases uh, purely because the management of the actual infrastructure of them, uh, the management of the services themselves is easier. Um, it's a lot easier, actually. Um, relational databases can be super finicky. Uh, they can be very finicky. Um, but again, it depends on what you're doing. You know, if you're putting together complex queries, you know, relational database is better. It's just a, uh, you know, pick the right tool for the job. Understanding when it's the right tool is, is hard. It takes time to understand wh what the right tool for the job is. But um, I, I, I'm a big fan of, I'm a big fan of, um, of NoSQL databases. Um, of document stores like it just because of the, the ease in which you interact with them they're not always the right answer at all um but again just because generally the management of the underlying systems is is a little bit easier i i really like having the setup like multi you know multi ac or or, or or even multi-region like replicated relational databases amazon makes it easier with rds and stuff but i've done all this stuff manually and it, it sucks it like it's not fun uh it's not fun so i don't know what are the practical uses of of or uh, great question um great question so maybe um i don't know I, uh, practical uses um that will be tough. i've used or a lot of times in real life um but maybe um maybe 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 we're a school i'm making this up on the spot i i don't know if this example is going to work until i get to the end so let's get there together uh maybe you're working maybe you're working for a school and you need to write a little bit of software to help the teachers uh grade something and maybe um only people who you know maybe only the people who are moving to the next grade uh maybe it's a it's a weird school where it's like you know, you gotta get an A or B in a class for you to move to the next level of the class or something like that. And maybe your application goes through and 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 it's checking people's things to see if they're eligible to sign up for the, the next level of class. And maybe, maybe you need to check, you know, like 
uh we're gonna learn about these in a little bit but if you can say if grade like equals an a or so it was python or you know or uh or grade equals b then then you can move on to the next grade uh so i don't know that see i just i don't know why that came to mind um i don't know a practical example is kind of tough uh, but maybe you know uh maybe we'll try to do something but uh or or is useful or is in fact useful javascript uh yeah use double uh things for the or uh and go it's the it's the double pipes as well i don't know if there's a word for this thing i no, Linux, call it a pipe. So when I see two, call it double pipe. Same way I call it double ampersands. It's just what you get. If it's the wrong terminology, please. Uh, I'm, I, I keep track of the things I learn on stream. So I actually have a lot of JavaScript stuff to put in here for the week. Uh, but if you if you know what this stuff is called, I'll happily put this in the things that I learned for this week. Turbo pipe. I don't think that's right, but I'm putting that in here because I'm we're gonna spread that. If that's not right, I'm putting the word of spread. I like that. Uh, let's see. I we're spreading it. We're spreading this around. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to say it as gospel. I'm going to go to places and be like, yes, uh, please put it, you know, uh, this or this. Uh, you put the turbo pipe in the middle and it is then a thing. I will give you your credit. Turbo pipe. It, it, I I love it. I love it. Excellent. Turbo pipe. We made something new. Um, and I want all of you, I want all of you to go out and spread the turbo pipe gospel and let everyone know that that's what two pipes are called. It's a turbo pipe. I love it. I love it. Bring turbo pipe to your pipelines class. 1000%. I mean, that sounds yes. All right. I mean, we're, you know, we're taking it, you know, a little PG, but, uh, it's okay. We're, we're, you know, if you learn how to code you can take a little bit of a joke every now and then I hope. All right. So we learned and, and we learned or so. If the thing on the left and the thing on the right are true, then I am true. If one of the things, if the thing on the left is true or the thing on the right is true, then I am true. That is what an or does. Uh, and let's learn about not. So not is uh, not just not simply inverses. Uh, it kind of just inverses a statement. Um, the not operator is interesting um, because of the way that it's used um, in a lot of places. Um, I don't, I don't like the not operator. So we all, we've already seen, we've already seen what that looks like. Uh, we've seen that with the greater than or equal to, uh, or the, the inequality operator. Um, so we, we said here is five, not equal to five. Oh, this is actually bash. Uh, what was I in? Is five not equal to five. And again, this is what the not operator does. It basically inverse, it inverts the, uh, the intended next sign. Um, uh, it com most commonly, when most commonly I see not used in JavaScript, uh, huh, I see it used in JavaScript more than anything to to determine if something uh, does not exist. Um, so in Python, you can do something like uh, I mean in, in Node, you can do something like like uh, if I, so. Uh, we already said x equals seven, uh, and I can say. Uh, um, now what do I do? Can I do like, uh, if, uh, X can I just do this? Uh, this is not, uh, how do you do it? Do you do it? Uh, how can I just check? I just want to return true or false. Uh, or can I just like do this? I don't know how to do it in JavaScript. I'm just trying to see how I usually use it. Well, you can, you can check for a value by, um, by simply, by simply calling the value and checking it for its existence. Uh, but you can also check for things like maybe you're uh, maybe you're writing a script, maybe you're writing a script to create a folder on your computer uh, to do some backups. And you don't want it to try to create it, your script might error out if the folder already exists. So you might want to check for the folder. Uh, and uh, basically, you can write a script to say basically, hey, if my folder exists, do something, uh, do something. This is not a real script, but what the not does is it allows you to say, hey, if my folder does not exist, do something. So it it, it, it flips, um, it flips the meaning. It, it, it runs the inverse of whatever the comparison or statement is. Um, I don't like to encourage uh, the use of not uh, in the beginning. 
um i really don't um i think it confused i think again just like just like the equality versus the inequality um i think there's in almost every situation you're gonna run into in the beginning uh why, why you're coding so to not throw your like get yourself into a and a little deep uh rut um you can almost always switch up your statements to be able to use equality or not knots <laughs> uh to be honest so you get your head in knots if you use too many knots. That's it's very true, and that's the only reason why like I'm not gonna go through a, a, a bunch of examples with knot right now, uh, because it's super confusing. Uh, it it can be very very confusing. So just know that it's a thing, uh, and or and not not says uh not it it, it flips. Whoa. Hello. I don't know what that was. I don't know. Did y'all hear anything? Am I crazy? It sounded like somebody ran into the window but I'm not too sure about what happened. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm cool with the ghosts. I'm more, I'm, I'm not worried about ghosts. The thing that I'm worried about is uh, people. <laughs> I don't like people, okay? Oh, I wish that, so the dog's not barking though. So we're safe, you know? If the dog isn't barking, we know that we're safe. So it's all good. Didn't hear it, perfect. I, you know, I'm crazy and it's okay. I'm okay with the, you know, that fact you're just confirming it for me so not is there great excellent we're all good um again these are not things that i that I, i'm not saying that to say like you should have this in the bag right now not at all um i think that these concepts uh don't need to be like i don't think we need to stay here for too long because again the words are there and i think they the, like because in python uh, they do use the words. It makes it a little bit easier to start to cement the concept. I think it's much more difficult when you just drop these on people right here. Um, and that's why I do like to put both the Python way of doing things and pretty much every other programming languages way of doing them. So ampersands again, like I said, is double ampersands for and uh, is like the same thing across the board. Um, let's actually just so people know what this is. Uh, put a dash so you don't think that that's the thing this is and this is or and this is not and again we're gonna we're actually gonna use uh we're gonna use one of these tonight we are gonna take oh we're there we're done we're writing fizzbuzz tonight we were gonna wait we're gonna wait um to write fizzbuzz until the first uh, algorithm section. I don't even think we need to waste our time doing that. We're doing fizzbuzz tonight. Uh, this is gonna be exciting. So you're gonna write your first uh, algorithmic program that's gonna get you all the jobs tonight. And it's gonna be quick and simple. And we're gonna use, we're gonna use almost everything that we learned tonight um, to, to do it. So more logic really quick. Um, this, like, yes, all these things are good. All of these things are good, but these things are only really uh, all that good when you can use them to control the flow of a program. Um, and so that's where we get into conditional execution. And I've been using these words tonight and I, I, I really like this concept because in all languages, it is, uh, it's a human way of thinking. I really, it, it's, a, it's a human way of making decisions, I think, and I think it's understandable, so. Are we doing any Java anytime soon? No, we're I'm sorry. We're not doing Java. No, no hate on Java. Um, I just think there are, uh, I, I don't know where Java would excel for anything that we are trying to do, uh, which would be pretty confusing. So conditional execution says, hey, I'm gonna decide whether or not code runs based on some type of condition. And so the way that this works is, uh, yes, Java has a lot, it's so much scaffolding. Uh, can we talk a bit about compilers? We can, um, we actually, we absolutely can. Um, we've talked a little bit about compilers, but we can talk more about compilers uh, for sure. So the way conditional execution works, it says, hey, if something is true, do something else. So uh, I, I think people are familiar, more people than I think are using the if this then that uh, application uh, to automate things in their daily life. Uh, but that is effectively, that is con conditional execution. That is conditional programming. Uh, so if something is true, do something else. So let's, let's figure this out. So you should already be seeing that if something is true, it's true, 
how do we determine if something is true? We know that comparison operators always return a Boolean value. So we can say, if something is true, do something else. So let's look at this. Let's write a little program really quick. Uh, write a little program. Uh, head over to REPL.T if you want to copy along. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. Uh, I'm gonna do this in. Uh, I'm gonna do this in Vim. Um, I'm trying to wean you off of having the same thing. So I'm I'm gonna go into what go into open up in VS Code or whatever you want, whatever directory you care about. It's okay. It is. It's okay if you're not following. Like if you don't want to type along with this. Um, right now um the, the concept is more important and i actually think watching me go write one first what is going to help a lot so um let's go to, let's make a directory called uh conditional logic and i'm gonna go in there and i think i spelled conditional wrong i think um and i'm gonna make a file in here and i'm gonna call this file uh if dot uh what do we want to write this in let's write this in uh we've been doing some python let's do let's, be, let's do python first now in here uh notice that the first line that we have here says if something is true do something and so this is where i'm introducing you to something called an if statement this statement is a way for you to determine whether or not something is true or false so that you can do something else and pretty much in every programming language it looks something like this as a keyword of if and uh, it's if and it's going to be a comparison statement. So statement, man, I can't type statement, man, state mint. There we go. Um, and then it, so this is not coding. This is not what it looks like. And then this is kind of what it looks like, though. This is kind of what an if statement looks like. It says, hey, if the thing right that you put right here is true. Do this thing down here. So run this bit of code right here. Um, and this part is very, 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 very useful. You will use it all the time. Uh, it's pretty important. So that's kind of what it looks like. Um, and so let's write one. So I can say, hey, if five equals five, which it is, uh, do, no, it's not two. I'm tripping. Uh, now I'm thinking about now I'm thinking about bash. Um, uh, print five is equal to five. All right, so this is our program right here. All right, so it says if five is equal to five, if five is equal to five, go ahead and do this thing. So let's run this really quick. I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna type in, I'm gonna clear this. I'm gonna say Python, uh, what did I call this? If.py. So it does in fact print out the statement five is equal to five. So we told it to do that. But what happens if I make these unequal? Is six equal to five? What do you think is gonna happen now in this program? Now, if I run it, uh, it looks like nothing happened. So you might be like, oh, did the program even run? The program did in fact run, the program ran, but uh, we introduced some conditional logic. The condition that we set up, this is the condition right here. The condition that we set up is not true. The if statement will only run if this statement becomes true. Um, so uh, because it does, because it's not true, the program doesn't do anything. It, it runs, it says, hey, this isn't true. So I'm not gonna do this thing down here. And this is why conditional logic is so powerful. Again, you can now add some flow to your program. You can determine what you wanna do based uh, on other things now. Um, so if this statement is true, do this thing. Um, and if not, you know, there, there's more to this that we're about to see in a little bit, but um, now you can do things like this. Uh, let's make it a little more robust. Uh, maybe, again, let's go back to the school analogy. Maybe you're checking against a roster and you wanna say, uh, maybe like my name is Aaron, the current name that you're on is Aaron. And I can say if name is equal to Aaron, let's say if, if name is equal to Brian. Uh, say, you know, uh, delete inside, cool. whoops, whoa, whoa, what am I doing here? I keep forgetting I'm using Vim right now. Delete inside, quotes, uh, 
I like people named Brian. You, uh, you pass. All right. So maybe you know if your name is Brian, then you automatically pass the class. Uh, but my name is Aaron. So let's see what happens when this runs. And we run it again. We get zero output. Why didn't we get any output? Because the condition that we set up uh, does not evaluate to true. I would need to change my name to Brian or I would need to change the bottom part, but I'm gonna change my name to Brian. And now uh, it's gonna say if if your name, which is Brian is equal to Brian, I like people named Brian, you pass. And it does in fact run that bit of code. So very, very important. Um, that's how you introduce some of that logic. We're gonna get a little bit farther, but just wanted you to understand if statement first. Let's see an if statement in, uh, in another language. Let's do the same thing in Go. Before I check out your comments, let's do the same thing in Go. So uh, let's do the same thing. Let's do name equals Aaron. And we're going to say if um, name uh, equals Brian. Uh, I never remember. The, I never remember the syntax here. Um, even though I write a lot of Go, um, I usually this this is the reason. So this is one of the reasons why I'm considering turning off um, auto completion in Vim or in VS Code, because uh, then I I never remember what I need to put in these things. Uh, I like people named Brian, comma. You pass. Um, I might have to put this in. Uh, I don't think so. I never remember. <laughs> okay, and so it ran. So this must be right. Um, so I, you know, recall from memory what an if statement might look like. So if this statement is true, do the thing that is underneath it. Uh, now, if I change my name to Brian and I run it. It does in fact print that out. See, I remember, I remember some stuff sometimes. Um, so again, conditional, uh, conditional programming, Condi uh, you know, uh, creating a, 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 a control flow in your application. So I don't want to backseat, but have you considered using an online editor like code? Yeah, 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 yeah. we, we, um, yeah, we did. We've been using REPL.IT. Um, while I while I do agree with you, um, I can follow along with code. I, I I I we had we actually so we were actually running a um, with this start with this uh, meetup that I was helping out with. We were running some um, some coding things, and the problem was that people who ever, like people were learning the concepts in there, and as soon uh, as you took them out of that environment, uh, they were in a like they actually got super discouraged because they were in a completely different world of, of running code, like understanding how to run code properly outside of that is a very important concept. The goal at the end of all of these weeks is to at least make you uh, comfortable going out and looking for jobs and being able to contribute uh, in some way to a company. And yes, I do think it's important. That's why I do people, tell people to go along with Rebel.it. But uh, one of the first things that we did in this course was to do a little bit of Linux, uh, do a little bit of that stuff. It's very, very important. Um, it's like that stuff is very important. I, I, I underestimated how, uh, how jarring it would be for someone who I, I just someone who could do uh, like could really solve like some genuinely tough algorithmic problems in Python, but was like, couldn't understand the, the connection between like that. The thing that he was editing was just a file was, was just a, like, was just a file. Not in this, like a lot of people have this idea that a code editor is like this special program and like all the stuff is running in this special thing. And like, couldn't understand that it was just a file and that this other thing needed to run. So yeah, I definitely understand. Um, I, I, I definitely think it's helpful for a lot of situations. That is why we'll hop into things like, uh, we go playground sometimes, but yeah, no, no, hundred percent. I, also saying the statement of that you don't want to be a backseat, uh, you, you don't want to backseat. Don't no one seriously, nobody feel that way. Express express things you, that you think will be beneficial. Some people uh, would actually, you know, at this time, 
might find that super beneficial. So throw that out there. Um, throw any ideas you have out there, completely fine. Like, trust me, I'm not gonna get upset. I don't, I don't care. Uh, the goal is to help. So yeah, feel, don't feel like you can't say things that you wanna say. Um, let's see, I thought if it was if, and then an else only come into play when if was false. Yes, so we're about to talk about else um, and all that. Can you call the function into the if? Uh, we'll talk about functions, I think in two weeks, uh, not two weeks, in two classes, I think. Um, can you call a function into the if? Uh, yes, you can call a function inside of an if statement. Okay. Um, Okay, um, so uh, the next thing is, while if something is true, do something. Um, so in this, in our case, uh, when we ran it the first time, nothing was true. So the, the program ran and just exited basically with no output. We can also add some more conditions to check for. So we can say, else if something else is true, do something else. Uh, and this part can be a little bit confusing here. Um, uh, so you, we really have three kind of methods to control the flow. You can say, if something's true, do something. Else if something else is true, do something else. You can have as many of these else ifs as you, as you want. And it is in fact called an else if, um, and you can have as many as you would like. Um, so I can say, uh, maybe I have a list of names um, that I say automatically pass. My name is Brian. I'm going to say if your names actually I'm going to change my name back to Aaron. And I can say if your name is Brian, I like uh, I like people named Brian, you pass. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this. I'm going to yank it. I'm going to change it to say I like people named your name. We'll do some fancier stuff to make it more dynamic later. I like people named your name, comma, you pass. All right, but maybe we have multiple names that we like uh, in, our, in our application and we wanna you know, help those people out as well. Um, we can, uh, down here, whoops, we can say, and I think in Python it's actually else and if, and I can say else if, and I have to give it another thing to compare. So I say if, else if name equals uh, Sarah. Then I also say, and I feel like, I don't know why I threw the H on the end, that feels weird to me, but uh, sure. I like people, ah, oh, I copied the wrong thing. Let's copy, let's remove this. I like people named your name, you pass. And let's say, uh, else if, name equals Aaron. Maybe I do like Aaron's, so. Else, if your name is Aaron, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm actually going to change the name so that you can see that different things are executing. Um, I like people named Aaron, Sarah, and Brian. So you can see it work a little bit. So take a look at this code really quick. And the way that you would read it is you would say, all right, I have a variable up here named Aaron and I'm gonna compare some things. So I said, if the, the, the variable name is equal to Brian, go ahead and print out this statement. I like people named Brian, you pass. That's not true. So else if only runs, the else if will, will only run if the statement, if, if statements before it weren't true. So. Uh, if my name was Brian, this would run and that would be the end of this statement. Nothing else would happen. Uh, so, uh, yeah, if my name was Brian, nothing, like once it matches one of these conditions, the first condition it matches is the one that will run. And then this, uh, this code will stop comparing comparisons will stop happening once it finds a match. So that's very, very important. Um, so we're gonna say if name equals Brian, you know, print out like people named Brian else if your name is Sarah. Uh, print this so it's only going to check this if this was false and then so it'll check that and then it'll only check this if this is false so it's not checking for each of these and i think that's this, the super confusing thing when you get into these conditionals 
um, it's that, uh, you know, you're checking for all these things. You could also use is, uh, if name is Brian. Use is, I don't understand. Uh, yes, I can, I can absolutely interpret the name into the string, uh, 100%. Um, but we, we've learned a little, we've learned a little bit about interpolation. Uh, we've done some interpolation, uh, don't want to make, don't want to muddy the concept with weird syntax. Uh, I think, I think interpolate, interpolated syntax, um, might be a little bit confusing, uh, when the goal is to hopefully learn, uh, just see the difference between if and else if, if name is Brian, uh, probably keep it dry. Oh, um. I mean, like, is is this? Oh, oh! I didn't, I didn't know Python had that either. I'm old school. I'm old school. I'm not teaching you this. <laughs> I'm not teaching you that. Um, that's fair. We want to only because we want to practice the. Um, uh, I, I really want you to understand these operators. I'm not hoping. I'm not. I don't want you to learn Python. I don't want you to learn a language in particular. I want you to understand uh, the operators that we just work with. Is it's the same thing. Um, that makes sense. That definitely makes sense. That's cool. I didn't know is was a thing. Uh, so let's run this really quick. Let's see what we get. Uh oh, uh, I have a problem else if only line five. Oh, maybe my else if is wrong. Uh, what is what's an else if in Python? Uh, keyword is it is it like this? Is it or is it e? Is it's not elif, is it? Oh, maybe it's elif. Never look, I mean, they're all so different. And again, I use the tool for the job. It is elif. Perfect. Great. Uh, so one, I, I don't, I don't need you to remember to remember that in Python, it's elif to, to do an else if I want you to remember that, uh, there are conditional statements that you can make. Uh, they're called if else statements, uh, and you use, there's different ways syntax to write them. Um, but it's if, um, and if something is true, do something else. If something else is true, do something. And again, you can have any number of those else ifs that you'd like that, but you can only have one if you can only have one if any number of else ifs that you want though. Uh, and so look, one thing gets printed out. I like people named Aaron, you pass. So if we go back and look at this, that means that this condition was false. It failed. So it went down to the next thing. And it says, all right, is this true? It says, is name equal to Sarah? Nope, not true. Goes down and it reads this, it says, yep, true. So if I change this to Brian and I run this, it's gonna match right here. Um, and nothing else is going to happen. Because again, once it finds a match, that's the only thing that happens. It does not go any further to compare the other two. Um, so if there was something like this, um, maybe maybe we had another one. Let's put another, let's like, let's like copy this. And we pasted this here. And actually it's gonna let me do this. Um, it should, because this is a, uh, this is a, um, Interpreted language. This should work. Uh, and I'll just say, I love Brian's you pass. So there's a whole different print statement than the one up here. Um, but they both are true. This is true. This is a true statement. It will be Brian. Uh, this should run. Let me see if it runs. But again, it only prints out the first one. I like people named Brian. You pass. Uh, this is not the one where it says, I love Brian. It, it matched this first case and said, all right, I'm done with this statement drops you out of, uh, it stops evaluating after that point. That is a very important concept to understand that once it matches, we're all done. Don't do anything else. They're slightly different. I think, uh, equals equals more correct as it should compare values. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know what it is. I'll just check in it is. My question is how will you ever use this for a job as a software engineer? I good. It's a good question. Uh, you use these, I use these all the time. Um, all all the time so for scripts um i use them maybe um i want to maybe i'm doing a batch process where um i need to comb through a a, a directory of a, of a bunch of files maybe a bunch of files have been given to us um, and i want to do some type of transform to uh maybe only 
only the only the pdf files maybe i want to grab all the pdf files and so maybe i'll do some things where i'll you know figure out the type of the file and then i'll say hey if the, or maybe there's a bunch of different file types and i want to move them to different directories maybe i want to sort uh, my downloads folder or something maybe i want to sort the files and put you know all the word documents in in a in a file maybe i want to put all the excel stuff in a file maybe i want to do something else uh but you can use this to perform uh different logic and as we tonight we're going to do fizz buzz and i think you're going to get to see kind of how you can uh how you can kind of use these things a little bit to to get better uh there's no switch in python um but there is a there, we're gonna talk about that in a second too um, the last thing we're gonna talk about is else. So you can only have one if, so you can say, if something is true, do something else. If something else is true, do something else else. If something else is true, do something else else. If something else is true, do something else. And the very last thing you can have is an else. Uh, and so an else is a catch all. So like the word, it says, all right, all right you know, none of these things are true. All right, for everything else, you know, uh, just go ahead and do this thing. So else only works if nothing above it was true and it's again like i said it's kind of a default it's kind of a catch-all not really a default it's kind of a catch-all uh for everything so i can say in here i can put as many of these elifs as i want um but i can get down here and i can the last thing i can do is i can say else you know i don't even need to know i don't even for else because it's a catch-all i don't need a condition i don't need to check for a condition i can say hey all these weren't true so therefore go ahead and print out uh i don't like your name comma you fail uh, this is a really mean thing to do but uh so if the name is in the list up here it's gonna say if name is brian go ahead and print that out uh okay that's false go ahead and move down if your name is sarah uh nope your name's not sarah go ahead and print this out is your name aaron nope your name's not aaron so don't print this out uh is your name brian nope your name's not brian again we already know that we'll change brian to something else i'll uh, go ahead and print that out so if our name is in is not in this list uh the last thing we'll do no matter what is do this so if our name is Janet. Her name is Janet. We, in fact, will fail this class. If our name is uh, Gunther, what will happen? Delete inside. Uh, Gunther. Her name is Gunther. We will also fail this class. Again, the else is kind of the catch all, and it, and it does not. Uh, else cannot take a condition uh and why why can't it take a condition because it is what you do if nothing else uh it was true above it so one if you can only have one if and you can only have one else uh why um the if is just the statement to start it off uh and the else again is that catch-all so you can't have two catch-alls um uh, you know, if, if you needed two catch-alls, you would basically need to create two statements that uh, matched those uh, things. But um, yeah. Uh, yeah, we're talking about switches in a, in a, in a little bit. Um, yes, readability. Um, there, there, there. For most, for 99% of things that people are going to be doing, um, actually, like, computers are so fast now, it doesn't really matter. Um, but there are performance differences between the two. Uh, they're pretty, and depending on the language, they could be minimal or very big, to be honest. We have enough of the if or else, no matter you're doing it wrong. Yeah, that's true. Um, maybe. Uh, maybe. I've seen some weird, uh, I've seen some some weird things where that was the only way that, you know, it's like, oh, this looks wrong. And it's like, you know what? When you dive into the problem, maybe it's not. Okay. He was trying to just notice your channel. Oh, dope. Perfect. Thank you, Arima. Thank you for the follow. Good to see you. What's up, Simeo? What's up, C Films? Good to have you. What's up, Only Me Diaz, Exotic Man, Mav Twitch 15, uh, Multi 0918 uh elevicted i like it uh i think i got everyone else before that welcome to the channel thank you for the follow hope you hopefully i didn't shout you out earlier hopefully you're not gone you were here to hear your shout outs but dope good to have you i think you use bitwise operators we're gonna talk about bitwise we're not gonna talk about bitwise tonight but we're definitely gonna talk about bitwise um all right 
So that is a conditional statement. So if something is true, uh, go ahead and run the code underneath it. And again, uh, we can we want to see something again uh, in another language, let go. Um, we can do the same thing um, uh, and go. I think it's. Uh, uh, is it else? I never. Hey, man, I'll be struggling with the. Um, you know, before I even do that, Golang, uh, else if, just to see everyone thing uses a different, uh, thing, uh, else, else if it's, so, I see I'm right. I knew what I was doing and I don't need parentheses. Okay. That's good to know. Um, but, I, but I, you know, I knew what I was doing. So else if, uh, name equals Sarah. And so this is going to start to look exactly the same. Um, And I'll just do like one more. And then last thing would be else. Um, and so again, see out here how it looks very similar. And so, so only Brian and Aaron work, but what if it was like Julia? And I ran this, um, oh. I'm just gonna put you fail. These are all the same. All right. Um, so Julia, uh, man, you're supposed to fail, not pass. You failed. Julia fails. Okay. So it looks, see yeah, how it looks. It looks similar. We're doing different languages, but it, it looks very similar. Uh, yeah, here we have, uh, you know, curly braces, and I don't need this. Still works. But, um, you know, it looks it looks very similar um, here. The concepts apply a kind of across the board. We can do the same thing in JavaScript. We can do the same thing in Ruby. Uh, these are integral parts of your problem solving um, and being able to control the flow of your program. You're going to use if statements every day, most likely every day. If else, if and else something's true, do something else. If something else is true, do something else else, do something. All right, pretty fun concept. You'll have plenty of opportunity to play around with that. I'll give you some ways to play around with that. I promise you, you will you will play with this. You will learn, like if you learn anything about coding, you're gonna learn about uh, if statements in this class. And then the last thing, uh, we're not gonna dive too deep into switch statements tonight. I want you to know what a switch statement is. Um, uh, switch or switch slash case statements. Uh, and so they're not available in Python. Uh, this is not something that's available in Python. Uh, but other languages have this. Um, and in fact, I'm not even gonna write one, but I'm gonna show you one. I think go by example has one here. So we can just see what it looks like. What this does is this gives you a cleaner way um, to do the same, um, make decisions. Again, it allows you to make decisions, allows you to switch uh, what what happens based upon a, 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 a true, true false statement based on a condition. Uh, so what you can do is no, that's not what I want. I want to go by example. Um, then go ask switch. Maybe it doesn't. Yeah. So, uh, so it looks, it looks kind of similar. Um, and so it looks something like this. And I think what I grabbed, I think what I grabbed from here, this is, I want to say this is JavaScript. I want to say this is JavaScript. So, um, it's kind of same thing. Um, it, 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 it can, uh, it operates a little bit differently. Um, or can I, it can operate exactly the same, but it can operate a little bit differently, but it's checking for something to be true. It's checking for a case to be true. Uh, and if that case is true, it'll go ahead and it'll run basically that block of code. Um, and, and then it'll break. So a switch statement though, I believe, uh, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm 99% sure I don't use switch statements, uh, ever, but, uh, a switch statement, you see this break right here. Um, whereas an if else statement will, will match will match a case. It'll say, Hey, this is true. Do this thing. And then it'll stop evaluating. I believe a case statement will continue to run. Um, we'll continue to check the different cases unless you run this break here in certain languages. Let me know. Um, um, yeah, most languages have fault through ability. Yeah. Um, but I know there, there are, there are languages where you do have to explicitly tell the switch statement to, Hey, stop uh, evaluating. Like you, you found a match. If you find a match, you know, do your thing and then break out of this. Stop evaluating these things. So yeah, depends on the language. Um, 
And so we're not gonna dive, we're not gonna do, we don't need this right now. Um, I think I, I, there will probably be a time where we, uh, where I'll, I explicitly create a scenario where the, where a switch or case statement is the best option. I want you to know about them. I want you to know there's another way to make decisions besides if and else, but I want you to focus on if and else right now. Um, you know, I want you to focus on one thing at a time. Uh, I just want you to be aware that there is this thing called switch statements or case statements in certain languages. So, um, yeah. First off, whoever's name, uh, oh, your name is also black on the, okay, whoops, I moved the whole chat. I wanted to see if your name was, um, it's black on my screen, so I can't see what your actual name is. Um, let's see, ah. A triumpha, welcome. Uh, sorry, I I've been ignoring your messages because I can't, I didn't know who was talking to me. Uh, because you know, yeah, it's it black background, black name. I don't know why they they should be smarter than that. Oh, you did that. Okay. <laughs> Wait, did you? And now I'm confused. I thought I did that. I thought uh, well, at least the people in the chat box. I think I did. I don't know. Actually, congratulations. You played me. Um. But yeah. Okay. Uh, then that's the switch statement. Now, a lot, of, a lot of, um, a lot of logical things tonight. Um, so, what do we learn really quick? And then we're gonna write this buzz. Uh, we learned about uh, comparison operators, and th these are all things. Don't, especially tonight. As from here on out, do not expect to fully understand. Like to like be like, all right. I got this, I know how to do this thing at the end of every class uh, for, for all the topics here on out. Um, we're gonna have to practice them and we are going to practice the hell at all of these things. So it's okay, uh, but we learned about equality. We learned that we can compare if things are equal or if they're unequal or if something is greater than something or less than something, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. We learned that this is an ability that we have in a programming language. And again, it's hard to know when you're gonna be able to use something like this, but now you know it's a thing you can do in a programming language. And we're about to, we're about to find out immediately why you would wanna do something like that. Without eventually, <laughs> yes, I love it. We aim for perfection without eventually reaching it. Yep, there we go, I love it, I love it. Um, we learned about math operators. We learned about some of the different um, math, uh, functions of math that you can do. Uh, we learned about, you know, different things we, that you can do. Uh, we also learned that all these math operators, these arithmetic operators, uh, don't necessarily only apply to numbers. Uh, we can do things like multiplication in addition to things like strings, depending on what the language. Uh, and again, the new one that you probably don't know is modulo or modulus. We talked about it last time. This time we talked about it as well. And that is division. Whenever you see modulus, the percent sign, it is dividing, but instead of returning, the value is returning the remainder, whatever is left over. Uh, and that's very important. We're gonna use that right now. So that's gonna be, uh, it's gonna make a lot more sense to you right now. Um, we learned about assignment operators. We learned about uh, where we're comparing what's on the left and what's on the right. When we get to comparison operators for assignment operators, we are actually uh, assigning the value. Uh, we are appending basically, or I don't want to call them all appending because some subtraction, but we are uh, we're performing an action with the value on the right uh, against the value on the left. So this one will add uh, what's on the right to what's on the left and assign it back to itself or assign it back to the value on the left. Uh, and all of these will do that. So it'll it'll basically take what's on it'll basically take what's on this side of the equal sign and it'll do this operation in the middle. It'll do it to that thing on that's on the left and save it to that value. Uh, so that's what assignment operator is. It's, it's for assigning values. Uh, logical operators, we learned about and, or, and not. We learned about how you can chain some things together. We're about to, we're about to use one of these right now. Um, so that'll make a little more sense. We learned that you can use them to chain together. Um, uh, comparison operations. You, we only did two, but you could have m many more. You can do like, if this is like, you can say is five equal to five and is six not equal to 10 and something else, or you can, you can chain them all together. So you can have more than two. Uh, we did not see that, but, um, there are times when that might be necessary. Um, but I don't like it. It's very confusing. Uh, we learned about conditional execution. Very important. Uh, we're gonna do this in a second as well. Gonna get hands on with this. Um, and it say, basically says, hey, I'm going to check to see if something is true. I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a condition. I'm gonna say, hey, is this condition true? If it's true, go ahead and do, so, like, if it's true, go ahead and do something. 
uh, else if this other condition is true, I'm gonna go do something else. All right, that's not true. All right, else if this thing is true, I'm gonna do something else. All right, none of the things are true. All right, or else, so you know, the last thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put in the else and I'm gonna do whatever else I wanna do here. Uh, so it allows you to, again, make decisions uh, based on conditions. You set up the conditions and determine what to do when a condition is in fact true. Uh, and then we learned about switches and case statements a little bit. Uh, we learned that there's just another way to set up um, uh, flows uh, based on a case, based on a condition. Uh, and the switch and case statements are the way that you can do that. We will touch these. I promise you we'll touch these, um, but don't want to dive too deep into them at all. Mm -mm. Don't forget your participation was at the end of this. Oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 okay. Well, should, I'll, I'll, <clears throat> here's how we'll do this. Partition Basin Awards, you will, you know, we'll get a generic template. Uh, it'll be up to you to submit your name uh, to, you know, a giant list of JSON in a, in a repo. And we will simply write a Python script to loop through and slap your name on this image. Uh, and that will be your participation award. Uh, it'll be fun. Carb out Ooh, pizza sounds good. Ooh, 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 ooh. you can be on the, everything should be done on the quantum level, okay? I, I, I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't know a lot of stuff, but I know a little bit about quantum. I, 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 I you know, I, I saw an article about quantum computers and I was like, that that sounds cool. And like, what does quantum mean? And you know, I, you know, one day, one day I'm gonna, I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna surprise y'all. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like, man, that man's really an astrophysicist. He really knows what he's talking about. And I'm like, yep, Neil deGrasse Tyson in that master class taught me everything I needed to know. And I'm gonna go, you know, as soon, as soon as I make enough money to go pay for it, I will. I'm gonna be so smart. And I'm gonna act like I'm smart too. That's the thing. That's the thing that like everyone uses education as a tool to be great in life. I'm gonna use education as a tool to purely stunt on people. I just wanna stunt on everybody. Just tell everyone what I know and impress everyone it's gonna be the best it's gonna be the best all right oh you know what copy and pasting right now i'll put it over here in this tab i will i'll watch these lectures does he sound smart is he someone i can copy off of they someone i can act like i love this <laughs> come back to i, I want to use education to stunt on whatever i mean yeah just, i don't care about really knowing i just want to sound like i know uh that's the key Okay, let's do FizzBuzz. We have 13 minutes to do FizzBuzz and it's gonna be great. Uh, right now, um, we are going to, you can go ahead and, I'm gonna send you this code. I'm gonna, we're gonna put this into GitHub so you can grab it. So don't necessarily worry about uh, typing it along because it'll take too long. We're gonna write this out though, really quick. Uh, really, really quick. So we are gonna write a program uh, called FizzBuzz.py. And everyone, this is like, this is like, it, it used to be a super um, big question to ask in interviews because uh, it, it covers a lot of things, uh, mostly everything that we covered tonight. Um, and so, I, you know, I I don't know if people are still asking FizzBuzz in interviews, I doubt it, um, but maybe they are. Maybe they'll give you a FizzBuzz type question, uh, but it's kind of your first foray into algorithm, algorithmic problem solving. Uh, but what is FizzBuzz? Let's, let's lay out the problem for you. Uh, yes, I'm sure they're asking way harder questions than FizzBuzz, but you, be, you you would really be surprised. I was surprised at how many people who who are like true professionals who don't who, who can't solve FizzBuzz. Uh, uh, but it's okay. But let's let's talk about what, Fizz, what FizzBuzz is. I'm gonna put a comment here at the top. And FizzBuzz, uh, FizzBuzz says, "All right." Um, FizzBuzz says, "I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do a end number. I'm gonna say print. We're gonna number one." We're gonna say, no, just, we'll do it in order. Print out, oh, uh, you know what? I haven't taught you all loops yet. I haven't taught you all, true professionals simply mean someone who gets paid to write code uh, who doesn't know how to solve his bus. Uh, I, I haven't taught you all loops, so uh, I'm still gonna teach you. I'm, we're still gonna run through this real fast. Uh, you're gonna be confused, but it'll help next time because I think next time we're going into loops, I believe. Is that what we're doing? Is that what we're doing next time? Let's see, decoded, apprentice. Yeah, yeah, we're going to loops next time. This is a precursor to what you're gonna do. Uh, real, uh, so print out the numbers, the number, print out numbers zero to 100, or one to 100, yeah, one to 100. Let's do, let's do one to 100, whatever, it doesn't really matter. 
Uh, so that's the first part of his buzz. Print out numbers, one to 100. But what they want you to do is for numbers that are evenly divisible by three, print the word buzz. A uh, fizz, whoops, man, I'm struggling already. I almost failed that fast instead of the number. Okay, so print out numbers one to 100. Number two, for the numbers that are evenly divisible by three, print uh, the, man, I, ooh, that makes this hard for everybody. Print the word fizz instead of the number. And I'm gonna copy this line and I'm gonna paste it. And I'm also gonna paste this. So that's the first thing. But then for numbers that are easy, evenly divisible by five, print the word buzz instead of the number. And for numbers that are evenly divisible by 15, print the word fizz buzz. All right, we got 10 minutes to get this done. We will 100% get it. We'll see if you, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on, come on. It's fine. I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna ignore everything you guys said because we won't get through it in 10 minutes if we don't. You do this with 100 lines of Elphis, then you fail. Uh, no, so block seven, I, that does not mean you fail. So let's start with the first option. Let's, 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 let's knock out the first thing first. Uh, what's the easiest way to print out the numbers one to 100? The easiest way is in fact this. You can, I take this as an acceptable answer. Now, I might not hire you, but this is an acceptable answer. If you do print one, you know, print two, especially because everyone here, uh, well, not everyone here, but people who are new to this here, we haven't learned how to do this easily. So you could do this and it would print out, you know, you could write a hundred print statements uh, and it will print out, you know, zero to 100 or one, or one to 100. Okay, great. Uh, we could, we could do that. Uh, we could hundred percent do that, but uh, there are easier ways to do this. Um, there are much easier ways to do this. And those things are called loops. And we're gonna learn about loops next week, but all loops do is loops allow you to perform a piece of code uh, over and over again, depending on a condition. So if a condition, like it'll basically run a, a bit of code, uh, uh, until a condition is no longer true. Um, and so it's it's a really nice way to uh, repeat functionality. So you don't have to write code over and over again. Um, and so um, I'm used to go and uh, go only has four loops um, and the range works a little bit differently, but we're working with Python. So the easy way to do this here, uh, what is it? Uh, for number in, what is it range? How does, how does range work in Python? Uh, what is it like range 100? Can I do that? Can I do this? Print number. Let's see if this works. Okay. First things first. Um, you don't need to know about this. Uh, I, I'm not gonna break it down for you yet, but I'm I, like, I'm gonna make this, this is the worst way he can do this. Ignore, this is not the perfect fizz buzz. We're writing a fizz buzz, not the perfect fizz buzz right now. We will write a perfect fizz buzz, uh, fizz buzz like thing. There is a, there's an algorithmic problem inside of exorcism called uh, raindrops, uh, which is actually goes pling, plang, plong instead of fizz buzz and it works a little bit differently. Uh, so we will perfect it there um, during our algorithm section so that you can see this. So keep this in mind. So we did the first piece, we printed out one to 100 and we can do that using a loop uh so basically this is just saying um for every number in range 101 so uh basically range is just a nice little thing that python gives you this is the reason why i actually hate um i could do a while loop i whatever we're not the loop's not important tonight the loop is not important tonight at all there's a million ways you can do this um i can do plus one again all, all you know they all work um but we can print out zero to 100 or one to 100 uh, right now, which we just did. And if you can scroll up, this one will work. Uh, it goes up to 100 and it just starts at zero, 100. It starts at zero. Whoa. It's not inclusive. I can start it at one by giving it an actual range, but not important. What's important is that now you know what a loop is kinda, um, but the logic is what we care about. We can print them all the stuff out, so that's great. But we can print it out, but it just prints out all the numbers. How do we do these things? This is where FizzBuzz gets confusing, and let's do it. 
First thing says, for numbers that are evenly divisible by three, print the word fizz. How do we know if a number is evenly divisible by three? The way that we know how to do that is modulus or modulo. Uh, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say if, if number, so basically every time this runs, uh, the number uh, moves on to the next number in this range. So it'll run once where the number is zero, then it'll run once where the number is one, all the way up to 100. So if number is evenly divisible by three, uh, so if modulo three, uh, so we know modulo doesn't check if something's evenly divisible, modulo does division and returns the remainder. Uh, so how do we know if it's evenly divisible? Because it returns the remainder, we can check that if the number mod three equals zero, then we know it's evenly divisible by three. So um, three, modulo three has no remainder. Three goes into three one time and it has no remainder. So it is evenly divisible. Six uh, is, is, you know, three goes into six twice, no remainder. Uh, so that's zero. So any number that's evenly divisible by three should uh, be here. So I can say if, any number that's divisible evenly divisible by three equals zero. I can go ahead and print the word. Uh, I want to print the word is print this. All right. But we also learned, uh, but we want to print out for everything else. We actually want to print the numbers. So how do we print the numbers? The way that we print the numbers is, you know, we set up a condition right here, but like for everything else, we wanted to just print the numbers, so we can use that else statement right here. What's up, uh, whoa, Zufo. Here you go, you get, the, you get the VIP status for that. VIP Zufo, thank you so much for the gifted subs. Everyone who got a sub, thank, I, I think you're just trying to slow me down because I was trying to do this quick 10 minutes fizz buzz. We're still gonna finish. You're not gonna know what happened, but I'm gonna finish. Thank you so much, I genuinely do appreciate the support. Really do appreciate it. Uh, yes, you can pay to win VIP 100% you gift you gift five uh, you do five gifted subs you 1000% uh, have paid to become VIP and I will sh you're gonna get it you'll get the you know just go go for it you know there's no uh do what you gotta do I can be bribed okay I'm not this is not some uh prestigious appointed position I can in fact be bribed okay um so we're gonna say the way we can read this is if uh, whoa, I didn't mean to do that. Let's go over. Okay, so it's gonna say, it's gonna check first to see if the number is evenly divisible by three. If so, it's gonna print fizz. If not, it's gonna just print the number. So let's go ahead and see that. Let's run this and check this out. Let's scroll, let's scroll up this bad boy. So we got zero, we'll talk about zero. We're gonna fix that. We're gonna just add a real range here. Oh, it's, uh, see, I, I, you know, that's that uh, psychology. I got you. I got you, Toast is Erling. No, I'm joking. Thank you very much. Again, I genuinely appreciate the support. You do, in fact, uh, get VIP. But the problem is, again, you already know, you've seen that I'm a terrible typist and your name is pretty tough. VIP, you got it. Go ahead and type something in there. See the little, uh, nice little thing against your name. That's perfect. Where's the swag? Swag's not here yet. Blah, it, blah. Keep troll if you keep trolling me, it'll come. It'll come. Pay to win. Pay to win. You know, we, we got microtransactions here. Um side note, the only person that uh you cannot pay to win for these. So again, I want everyone to congratulate M Jean because she's getting one of these Nest Minis. What did she do? She simply asked how to win one and and said she could win one because she was first today. Uh, and so she wins one. So I like that initiative. You all keep taking the initiative to get me to figure out uh, what the way is to win these things, but I appreciate it. Uh, now with all these subs, I can get more to sell. And again, you guys are just slowing me down. We're not gonna finish now, but notice it prints out one, it prints out two, but three, it prints out fizz. So when it ran through that loop, it says, hey, when I'm on number three, I'm gonna check, you know, all, every number it says, hey, am I evenly, is three, is my number modulo three equal to zero? No, okay, print my number out. But for everything that's evenly divisible by three, so six, nine, 12, 15, excellent. We go ahead and we get uh, we get that all the way down to the bottom. Now, the point tonight is not for you to know what FizzBuzz is. Uh, I always wanna run through it for fun mostly, uh, hopefully to make you even more confused than you ever were, and then we'll clear it up next time uh, once we know how to do some loops whoa whoa okay so let's do the next one 
for numbers that are evenly divisible by five, print the word buzz instead. So we know that we can check other things. So we can say, hey, all right, if you're not, if you're not evenly, evenly divisible by three, that's fine. But I also wanna check if you are evenly divisible by number modulo five equals zero. Go ahead and print buzz. All right, so now we have the same thing. So numbers that are evenly divisible by three will print fizz. Numbers that are evenly divisible by five will print buzz. Let's see this. Now we got a bunch of fizzes and buzz here. So all the numbers that should be evenly divisible by five are the zeros and the fives. So this would be 80 right here. One, two, three, four, five, buzz. One, two, three, four, five, oh, zero. Fit, uh, wait, 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 90 should be, oh, look at that. 90 should be, uh, uh, is it fizz or buzz? This is actually a great question. I've actually never thought about this about fizz buzz, but it doesn't matter. Uh, cause I have, because we get to the next part, uh, which is pretty important. You might be like, all right, what about the things that are evenly divisible by both? You know, uh, fizz buzz and uh, fizz and buzz and what should it be? Uh, so actually that should have just given you, uh, that actually gave you a big hint. So we can, um, let's, let's edit this file again. Let's do the last piece real quick. And this is where fizz buzz gets complicated. Just gonna tell you right now, this is where fizz buzz is complicated because then you might go in here and you say, cool, I got this. If I know how to find out something's evenly divisible by three and five, I can figure out how something is evenly divisible by 15. And you might grab this right here. Whoops, undo, paste. And you might say, if number is evenly divisible by 15, then go ahead. Oh, uh, I already, nope, I already messed up guys. G darn it, you guys, you guys caught it. I think someone caught it. I, 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 I gave you the answer. This is not what FizzBuzz is. I'm sorry. I'm, I, do, I messed up your first FizzBuzz interaction uh, and I'm, I'm hurt. Uh, so it's really supposed to be if it's divisible by three and five. Print the word FizzBuzz. That's what it was supposed to be, not 15. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm I'm completely sorry. So uh, that's where it gets complicated. And so, no, you don't want to do this. Uh, you would probably do something like this. You would say three, because you divisible by three, and number is uh, evenly divisible. Oh no! Oops! I need a zero. I need an equals equals zero over here. So this is what someone the first time you write FizzBuzz, you'd probably end up. You know, you probably spend a bunch of time, and you probably end up right here you probably end up at this statement because this is what it was supposed to be. I'm sorry I gave you away the answer really early, um, but this is probably where you would end up the first time you run it, uh, for, first time you get there. And this is a reasonable place. If I was evaluating you um, to hire you and you got here, I would be okay with that. Um, I would be I would be okay with that. Um, but it's supposed to, this is supposed to print out FizzBuzz. And let's look at what happens. If you run through this whole thing, you never get FizzBuzz. There are numbers in this list that are evenly divisible by both three and five. What numbers are those? What's the first number we get to that's evenly divisible by three and five? The first number that we get to that's evenly divisible by three and five is in fact 15. Uh, so 15 should be there. And so that's kind of the shorthand uh, that people need to figure out, but this code does work. Uh, this code, I believe will work. Um, and it will work if you change the order, because remember, it matches the first thing and it moves along. So 15 was actually showing us fizz. So I could do this. Um, I could take this off right here. And I could yank this out of here. And I could paste it up here. And I could say, all right, first line check for this and print fizz buzz and down here only print fizz. So I flipped it around a little bit. And the first thing I'm checking for, if things are evenly divisible by 15 fizz buzz, uh, buzz and fizz. Uh, and so this, I believe will actually give me a working fizz buzz application. So let's scroll up a little bit. And so what do we get? One, two, fizz. So fizz should be is evenly divisible by three, four, five, five is evenly divisible by five. So that's buzz six evenly divisible by three. So fizz seven, eight, nine fizz buzz 11 
All right, we get all the way down to 15, which is the first number, which makes it fizz buzz. What's the next number? 30. Fizz buzz. So this does work. You do have a working uh, piece of code. But then again, I already gave you your, I uh, already gave you the, the great math there, uh, the easy part of this uh, is that you can really just the, the every number that's evenly divisible by three and five is also, uh, you know, evenly divisible by uh, that common, uh, what's the common denominator, common quotient, I don't know. Uh, it's 15, so you can actually do it like this um, to clean it up just a little bit. Uh, but this, in fact, uh, this is a running FizzBuzz application uh yeah like google it i would google fizzba fizzbuzz the divis it's divisible by the product yes uh it's divisible by the product um so this is a way that you can do it um this is a way i mean this is the logic right here um pretty much this is like the perfect logic there's some interesting ways uh, some dude wrote it in java <clears throat> and like this like huge crazy program uh because he thought it was such a dumb question and someone asked it to him uh, in an interview, don't know if it was a real story, probably fake, but it was a good, it was good entertainment. Maybe I'll send that out. <clears throat> but this is how you would use, uh, like just, this is just, again, I don't need you to understand that anything we did tonight, uh, well, I don't, I don't need you to understand anything we did for FizzBuzz. It's okay if you're struggling through it, you should be. We just, we ran through and we just wrote it and you know, we didn't provide a lot of context, but I'm gonna give this to you and you you can see how we used the things tonight. We used a modulo, a modulus, but we also used a comparison operator here. We also used uh, uh, those conditional things. So we used if those conditional statements uh, to control the flow of our program. We used if and else ifs. So we used a lot of those things all at once. So it's a it's a it's a pretty solid program to contextualize the thing that we learned tonight. But it takes time to learn this stuff. I'm telling you, I know people who've been coding for a while that can't solve FizzBuzz. I I've seen it in action. I've been pretty surprised actually. So completely okay. Two gigabytes of memory in FizzBuzz in Java. Uh, but yes but I couldn't do it in VS code. Okay, I'll, um, I'm gonna put this stuff uh, up in GitHub right now, uh, but that's it. Does anyone ha have any questions about anything that we did tonight? I know it's probably tons of questions about what we did tonight. Um, again, we'll be learning right now uh, about this, this loop that we did. Uh, we will be learning all about loops next time. Loops are uh, amazing. Um, loops are super uh, amazing. Um, and so we can do that. Uh, yes, I can do, yes. Um, yes, you can do go routines and go. Uh, super easy to do actually, super easy to do. Python is really similar to Ruby. I've written FizzBuzz and JS and Ruby before. Yeah, yeah, uh, it is actually, it's, it's pretty similar. <laughs> Are you remind me next time? Okay, cool. Yeah, we'll do some, we'll do some, um, we will absolutely do some concurrency and go. Uh, I'll teach you all about, uh, all about that. I'll teach you all about channels. I'll teach you all about all those things. Uh, I, man. I was, I'll talk about that later, but uh, yeah, we can, we can go over all that stuff, but that's it for tonight. Um, let's put this in GitHub really quick so that you can have access to it. Whoa. Actually, we need to put all this stuff in. Let's clean up some of this. Let's remove, uh, I want to remove Jack Black. Order test one. Actually, you know what? Test star. What's left? Uh, RM dash RF Aaron. RM dash RF hello. <clears throat> What's in one? <laughs> oh, okay. I think this is all of our Linux stuff. Uh, RM dash RF one. Yeah, I think everything else uh, is something cool. Uh, I don't think this is a Git repo. It's not uh, get in it. Okay, one second. Let me give you a spot in GitHub to grab this from. In case you want it. Wow, that's a new repo. I, I think we don't we have a repo for this class already. No. Uh, let's see. Python test repo. I feel like we already have one for this. DevOps Bootcamp 2020 Pipelines Journeyman. GCSH. Uh, yeah, I'm using ZSH right now, even though I hate it. 
<laughs> I hate TSH, but we do have it. Decoded Git example. Oh yeah, we only have this a Git example. Here's what I'm gonna do. Um, let's create one called Decoded Class Notes, or maybe Class Examples. Let's call it Class Examples. Uh, so we're gonna create a new repository really quick. And we'll call this Decoded uh, Class examples for anything we do there in the class just so you have access to it um and, and the other repo that there's going to be is going to be the class homework that's the reason why i'm giving the same name um uh for the homework but again i'm still trying to figure out how to use the github classroom for that uh examples we create a class again full of typos you know for sure public to everyone create repo let's uh Um. Ah, whack. What has a submodule in it? Hold on one second. Uh, what? Uh, what? What has this? What has a submodule in it? Hold up. Hold up. What? What? What is uh? Oh, the pie. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go in there. Data structures. Why is that there? We're moving that. Uh... What is this? What is this pie cache? How do I get rid of it? And why did it only show up when I did this? Am I in the wrong directory? Is it in data types? Yeah, that's why you tricked me. You tricked me, Pi Cash. All right, ignore that. Um, yeah, there we go. All right, get commit. Uh, added all of our class examples. Okay. Uh, Dash you origin. Oh, sorry, I got frustrated. Uh, I usually use uh, SSH keys for Git. So whenever it asks me to authenticate, I'm like, why do I need to authenticate? I feel like, you know me, you know, you're supposed to know who I am, GitHub. Um, but they don't know who I am. So if you want to grab this, if you want to grab the code that we did tonight or any of the code that we did before, uh, tonight we, our, our stuff is in conditional logic. Uh, here it is. You can run to get this. You can simply run and go right here. I'll share it with you. Simply run git clone this. You can literally copy that that whole thing right there uh, from the command line and it will clone this down to your computer. So feel free to grab it if you want to grab it. But now that's it for tonight. Uh, if you're interested in any of the stuff with Horizons, tomorrow in Horizons, we are doing uh, S3, more S3 stuff, but mostly uh, interfacing with S3 from the command line, because uh, that's pretty important. But we're also talking about uh, content delivery networks, CDNs with CloudFront. Uh, so we'll be taking our static website that we set up and we'll talk, be talking about, you know, um, you know how you serve uh, people around the world and what CDNs are kind of good for, why they're so important nowadays. Uh, but yeah, we're back on Thursday with uh, with some loops, some loop de loops. But that's it. Thanks everyone for the great conversation tonight. Uh, M Gene, I'll be sending you a message uh, for to figure out which color you want and to get where to send it to. Um, everyone else, be thinking of some cool ways where you can convince me why you deserve one of these. Uh, since I'm really bad at setting up uh, any type of structured thing where you can win those things, watch out for um, watch out for uh, tonight or tomorrow, uh, depending on how far I get tonight. Trying to figure out how to get the stuff into GitHub Classroom. Like I said, GitHub Classroom looks pretty dope. So you can see it, um, it's pretty cool. It, it can automatically uh, kind of, like you can write code right in there and like like upload stuff to it and like it'll like check it and give you some feedbacks and you all can comment on each other's stuff as well. Um, so it's kind of cool. I think this is gonna be a good thing for the future, but I don't know if I know how to use it properly yet. So just working on that. Um, if not, I'll send you a link to just a GitHub repo for some of the homework this week. That's gonna give you some practice, like hands-on practice doing some of this stuff. Um, that should be kind of fun, I hope. Um, 
yeah and on pipelines this week we're doing ci cd so if you're interested in continuous integration continuous delivery or continuous deployment we are diving into that stuff on saturday so that's it sorry to keep you for an extra 15 minutes we're outy who are we rating tonight last night we rated uh peach tv i think uh, he uh he makes games that was cool i i actually really enjoyed that um we've actually reached out to each other um so now we're making friends you see that we're just we're extending the community we're all having fun yes remember to add uh 5 and 15 i'll see what's going on with that i'll see if it got pulled down if it got pulled down i'll edit out the piece that it got pulled down for um why did i click on myself i didn't mean to do that um i meant to click science and tech um i will absolutely do that i'll do that right now so perfect five of 16 four decoded i think that's the only one that's missing um yeah i got dc made on uh i got dc made on like set on all of last week's videos uh so i had to recut them um it's because of the intro songs though i forgot to forgot to trim out the intro music uh right now what is my intro music right now my intro music right now uh that was like a, some future song this one is uh is rma uh, is, is this new rma um what's it called uh dealer i think dealers or whatever it's called i don't know these these newfangled kids out here rapping and stuff uh nice beat uh but yes i did get dcma made like hard like usually is it ineligible for monetization i'm okay with that these got pulled these got pulled down right when they went up uh so that was pretty interesting <clears throat> so the, uh, most of them are fixed i'll check on number five let's raid anyone doing anything everyone's always like the, there's so many game developers there's anyone who's not a game developer on here open cv python okay okay maybe maybe raspberry pi content on your to-do list i'm trying to move on to passing uh, oh I, I, okay <laughs> yeah that's fair no that's fair um these seem i'm trying to what, what do we do tonight let's see if we can find someone doing web dev work on a blueprint editor for for space engineers come on come on we have to go over here because this person can obviously teach me all the things i need to know to be an astrophysicist because they're uh you know they want to work on space with space engineers so that's who we're going to see uh you know that's the coolest thing i've ever heard uh the chicken channel is great uh i I spend too many bits on the chickens channel, uh, to be 100% honest with you, they're great. We're not gonna see the chickens tonight though. Um, we're gonna raid Gil, gl oh, glitched. I don't like it. I don't like it, but we're still gonna go there anyway. I don't like it because I struggled too hard to read it. Uh, and you know, if I struggle at something, it's not my fault, it's other people's fault. Uh, on why that happened to me, but again, thanks. I had a good, I had a great time tonight. Thanks everyone for uh, the information. I actually learned a lot, especially about JavaScript. So uh, I appreciate that because JavaScript is something that I work with that I don't necessarily care about, uh, but I should probably care more because uh, it's a great technology, uh, or at least it's a popular one. So uh, I should know more about it. But dope. See y'all later. Let's go say hi to gl gl glitched, glitz, glitched. He's gonna teach us about space, and we are gonna be uh very 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 smart astrophysicist peace let's go uh oh i always i always feel like when i hit the raid button it's gonna just go but i forgot there's like a 10 second countdown so we're out of five four wait 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 wait, wait. five four three two one let's go